Hello there and welcome everyone. Whether you be watching this on Twitch or watching this on YouTube, I thank you so much for clicking on this and giving it a watch. So we're going to be doing a part two of the previous parts thing, which was playing through a lot of PlayStation 2 demos. So I hope you sit back and enjoy and yeah, let's get on with it. Hey Lamau, we're getting straight into it. All right, so let me head on over to the camera. Which I should have had more more prepared, but it was on the opposite part of my table. There we go. The sounds are turned down, but that's for the sake of the video. Um, but hey, hey, everybody. So we should be able to see um, somewhat the camera. So this is all the demo discs we went through yesterday. Um, we went through a lot of them for anybody who wasn't here last time. And if you were watching this on a YouTube video, I will have it linked somewhere where part one is and where you can watch part one. Um, but for today, we'll be going through the rest of these here. Which are these ones, which we've got one more from 2003, 2004, and the last one is at 2006. We've got a fair few here still to go through. And we'll be turning on the console now, I just thought I'd show that that's what we've got next to do. So, yeah, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy some absolute nostalgia. Alright. Alright, enjoying the PS2 in all its glory. So the next demo disc um, that we have for us today is going to be... Um, hopefully I sound alright. Hopefully it's not too um, not too warpy as for the previous stream that was like that. Okay, so we're going to be looking at today's, which is demo disc 33, which was November 2004. And I think people are going to like this one because... Uh, Disc 33, which is Demo 51. It can get a little confusing with the numbering for these discs, but I assure you, this one's going to be a cool one. So this one was the demo disc that I outlined yesterday that had a demo of Ratchet & Clank 3, uh, Colin McRae Rally 05, Crisis Zone, DJ Dex and FX, and Spyro A Hero's Tale. Metroid Dread sounds great. You've moved from modern Metroid uh, onto Retro today, so I hope you hope you can enjoy yourself. But it's a pretty good game. All right, so we're just booting this baby up. You enjoy the splash screen once again, and we'll have your chats up on the screen as well. So if there's any notable questions, uh, they will be included, and I will be they will be answered, and we'll be able to see them on the VOD as well. That's great to hear. All right, yep, now that we're up to 2004, we get to hear more of this demo. So this is what my uh, my asset is inspired on. It's inspired on this demo menu here. So I think it's a bit of a cleaner menu in comparison to the other ones. The other ones had the inverted control scheme. This one's a bit more straightforward, so we have the... These are all playable demos, so... I guess we'll go by order. We'll start with Colin McRae Rally 2005, so a little bit of rally racing. Alright, and this is one of those games that needs to reset the console, because some games were programmed to go back to the main menu, and some of them you had to uh, reset yourself to go back. Well, I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy sticking around for whatever amount of time you're able to stick around, as this will also be archived for YouTube. So, thank you, thank you. Good to have you all here. Alright, let's try out this demo of Colin McRae Rally, because um, there were a few on the previous demo discs that I didn't play, because I knew there'd be a little bit of repetition. 
So we'll, we'll try this one out since we didn't try the others. I haven't played too much of these sorts of games, but uh, Rally is actually like pretty underrated, so you can't really go wrong with these sorts of games. 70% completed demo code. Oh, it's interesting that they note that. This is 70% complete. That's so great to hear, CC3. Maybe if you get better at driving stick, you can actually try this game out. <laughs> Alright, stages online. Wow. I guess they want you to race a stage. That would make sense. It's the demo. Name, name entry? It's, it, it's a demo. Alright, well, there's no numbers, so we'll just go with that. They're actually letting me do that. Nationality. Alright then. Alrighty. Okay. Let's see. Uh, car select. Yeah, race is probably fine. Choose a car. Oh, we've only got the Peugeot 206 for the demo. That's cool. That's cool. Alright, let's just head straight to the race then. You have this game? Awesome, Jonas. I think it's pretty great to have like uh, just a variety of different games, and considering it's considering there's so many different rally games. This was back when Colin McRae was still around. Um, I'm pretty sure nowadays there's still rally games made, but they no longer have the Colin McRae license, so they might just be called. I think they might be the Dirt Rally series. Might be the same uh, team. I could be wrong on that. If anybody in the comments below wants to wants to clarify, they're welcome to. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that the series still carried on, but under a different name. So you wrote a piece of history if you got one of these games. And I think the um yeah, it's it's really interesting with with the rally games is they do they do a pretty good job at uh the realism and i'm also a fan of the sega rally so it'll be worth giving this a go another example of a ps2 game with really nice car models and the physics feel pretty nice albeit someone who plays with manual might have a bit more fun out of this i'm just using auto because that's what it's defaulted me to and Probably for the best. Oh, it's showing me car damage. Okay, and this um this supports using right stick for reverse and braking and acceleration. So if you don't want to use the X button, you can actually throttle with the um, right stick. Oh dear. Yeah, the graphics are very solid. I think the reason these games get overlooked is because there's a lot of them. Um, in a similar vein to sports games, a lot of releases come out for these, so it ends up being a uh, little bit of a an influx of these titles. But just having just one of them in your collection is always fun to have for when you want to try something different. <laughs> smashed into the into civilians. Okay, I don't actually understand. This is a this is a weird like S bend. I think that's an S bend. It, it's a bit hard to tell. Oh. Anyway, I can just picture that if I was a fan of these games, if I was a person who's a fan of these games back in the day, I would have been pretty excited to get a demo that allows me to test out the physics and stuff. Just killed eight people. <laughs> this is also reminding me of a demo that released for it was Gran Turismo HD Concept on the PS3, which in a similar vein created a demo just like this. So I like when games do that. Oh yeah, a shift turned around. Yeah, this game feels pretty nice for physics if you really like sliding around in dirt. This is the game for you. Ow. It's a very solid tree. Uh, oof. Yeah, my co-driver is, is, is uh, telling me that there's a lot I need to worry about. You know, there's a lot... 
like a long medium right basically. We're only about halfway there, so I think it's yeah. Start the show's car damage as well. Look at my Peugeot finish line. <laughs> yeah, definitely have to work on my drift skills, at least for the rally scene. Uh, if this were a, I would have played the demo for Need for Speed Underground yesterday, but I opted not to because that game has a lot of licensed music. So if I do skip a demo, it's probably going to be either because of re demo repetition or just license music licensing. So I do apologize in advance, but if there's any of these demos you want to try for yourself, chances are they are archived online, but I might be willing to archive them myself uh, if there's any missing for the uh, for the community. Sounds like a really good idea. Thank you. But <laughs> See, it said I'd have to reboot, but it's actually rebooted for me. So I'm good with that. Alright, what's next? DJ Dex and FX. So this is a uh this is actually gonna be interesting because this is a DJ Dex simulator. Um I have tried this one a little bit. <laughs> this one I've had a little bit of time fiddling around with, but it's a pretty fleshed out um a pretty fleshed out game that lets you mess around with a DJ deck and create music. Um even on the demo, I actually had trouble following when I tried to play this once before. But um, I'll just give you guys a little bit of a quick outline to show what it looks like, and yeah. Equivalent of a 2,500 euro kit. Sample section of the song and loop them. Bend and distort, mix vocals. Yeah, so you really get a good choice. There's, there's a few games like this on the PlayStation, but this one intrigues me because I don't actually have the game. And if I did, I'm sure I'd be, I'm sure I'd have a lot of options available to me. But yeah, even just this demo alone was uh, pretty fun to mess around with for anybody who's interested in a uh, music production or anything like that. So I'll just show you guys the, the layout. Alright, USB headset not detected. Wow. Even with the demo, I could have plugged in a headset and jammed out with a headset. That's pretty cool. I, I guess it would be a USB headset considering the uh, PlayStation 2 hardware, but that's pretty cool. So you got a tutorial. The tutorial was actually pretty confusing for me last time, but got party mode and pro mode. I'm just gonna go with the party mode, and I'll just show you guys the the UI and stuff. Because the tutorial can be a little bit time consuming, um, and we're kind of trying to outline multiple demos today, so. Loading on the real hardware. Here we go. Look at that deck. What a nice looking... I'm gonna become a pro disc jockey now. Yep, see, we got the different... We got the logo for Relentless Software on there. It's pretty cool. Alright, yep, yeah, if you want to put a track. So basically, you get to... You get to literally press all the buttons and stuff you want to do. So, record box. Okay, so this is how I would add stuff. So you got Junior Jack Stupid Disco. I'm not going to add any music because of the licensing. Um, but yeah, basically I can put one of put like different tracks that I have, which the demo is only limited to these three songs, and you could mix them and make your own like loops and stuff, make your own mixes, which I think is really really cool. So I'm not going to add any of these just for licensing sake, but they literally give you Stupid Disco, which is a great song, uh, Martin Solvig, uh, Rocking Music. Masters at Work, featuring Papa, Mouse, and T. Denise, if I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, they're, um, they've got some pretty good samples here, and you can mess around with all these different things. If you want to change the dials, you can change the dial, sample things. I'm pretty sure that if you, once you get the hang of this game, you can change a lot of stuff on the fly. It's pretty, it's pretty well thought out. you got different, like, crossfade modes, if you want to go for sticky or spinny caps, um... My terminology might not be the greatest because I am not a DJ. I have never DJed IRL. This is where you put another track on this deck. Then you got up here, you can do different, uh, you can set loops, different loops and stuff. So it's a really fascinating uh, piece of kit just in this demo alone. And I can only imagine 
what playing this actual game would be like because you could actually sample your own music. I wouldn't be surprised if the final game lets you uh resonant DJ starting. No trek on deck, yeah. MCA. But yeah, um this game is just basically a, a DJ deck simulator, so if you want to do some disc jockey mixing in your downtime, this game is pretty cool. I, I like the look of it. I've never actually played anything more than this demo before, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's incredible. You know? I'm sure it gives people that required fix. So I'm just gonna reset there. I'm gonna try the next game. But you know, if you're into your music production or you wanna try something out for fun, uh here's an example of a cool game that you can try. Probably with more uh, more music options. There's even some similar games on PS1 that were done by MTV, but this one was done by Relentless Software, so just thought I'd outline that. Um, pretty fascinating stuff you can find on these demos. Take it from products still in development, that's why we're here! We're enjoying the stuff that's still in development. Alright. Next demo, we've got Ratchet and Clank 3. Let's get let's get in and with it. Next month I will be playing Ratchet and Clank 2 and 3 in their entirety. That's that's the aim for Christmas and birthday celebration, stuff like that. Um, but it'll be cool to check out the demo now so you guys can see some some different content, uh, you know, modified assets or cut music, stuff like that. Um, the Ratchet and Clank demos are known for having things that were removed or modified from the final game, and I'll be able to outline, the, outline those to you as I, as I play. So, I mean, this splash screen is completely different. Oh, well, they have the, they have the opening cutscene from the game in a smaller resolution, but it's the same cutscene. Your luck is extraordinary. Which is very cute. I might just uh might skip it. Um because we'll we'll be seeing that pretty soon. Okay, so what do we have here? We have go to Marcadia, fight the ruthless tyranoids in the streets of Marcadia. So we got the Marcadia level. Oh, they have this sound effect that they end up using in Size Matters, which is a game that was released way later after this. Um, jump to the Marcadia battlefield, so I'm assuming, oh yeah, Galactic President's compound under attack, so this is where you help the rangers in the final game. You got the Quark vid comic, which, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of these. Um, Battle Friends and Hoven Gorge, oh, they added a, so this is a multiplayer map, they actually give you a two or four player split screen on the demo. That's pretty awesome. So if you're playing this with a friend and you've got this demo disc but you don't have the full game yet, you could just play this map in multiplayer just for funsies. And then you got the little cinematic that we skipped and the online gameplay movie, which I think is the one with Captain Quark. We might play that in a moment um, to archive it. I think we'll get started with the Quark vid comic because you guys will really, really enjoy this. Uh, they're these little, they're these little like uh, Metroid inspired. In Metroid inspired minigames where you play as Captain Quark. Squeeze into the skin tight uniform of the galaxy's greatest superhero, Captain Quark. I have played these a lot, so I'm assuming it's going to play the same, but if there's anything different. Well, right off the bat, there's uh, no music, but let's see if it still works. Oh, if I can do the, co the code correctly. Um... Alright, so the cheat codes haven't been programmed in this version of the game yet. In this build. And the music just came came in. This is actually the wrong music for the, for the game. The final version of the game has different music, I think. Yeah, this is the music for the Insomniac Museum that was added later. I'm gonna try and speedrun this a little bit because I used to do that with, with these vid comics. I would speedrun them. And I would wall jump this segment. Bling, bling, bling. Oh. Alright. I still remember the, the speedrun cues for this.
I think it's pretty interesting that they that they they include this uh they include this on the demo. Oh, they make me fight them. All right. So this is a mini game from Ratchet and Clank 3 actually. Um, I just thought I'd give this a play and see if there's anything different. It looks like it looks like this uh, it looks like this demo might have been pretty late in development because the vid comic's playing basically the same. And uh, and when I actually play this game next month, I'll actually play through this properly because uh, this is one of the few things that I actually enjoy speedrunning. These are mini games that are included in Ratchet & Clank. But yeah, you play as Captain Quark, which is interesting. Oh. Yeah, I hate- uh, this happens on the- yeah, this is all- well, this whole vid comic plays the same, so. <laughs> I promise I know how to play this, but we might actually not dwell on it too, too much, just because um, there'll be other parts of the demo we can try. Fall 2004. It's weird that they use fall considering this is a um, this is an Australian demo disc, but I, I guess, yeah. I guess they didn't change that from the promotional material when they put it on the disc. So, we'll try one of the other segments in the game. Um, I could show you guys the we could we could try out this multiplayer map and have a look at that. So you can choose a four player, two player split screen. Okay, well I don't have a player two plugged in, so maybe we won't. Uh jump to Arcadia Battlefield. I think we'll do that just to showcase um just so we can see, have a look at the assets and stuff, if it's still the same. Because there's some interesting betas for Ratchet and Clank that have been archived that show uh, weapons and stuff that were cut from the game. So I wonder if this is one of those demos or if this is one of the later ones. Um, I would not know. But we can check that out as we're playing. Secure the area. So right off the bat. Everything looks more or less the same. The uh, the uh, the way the ammo is displayed is different. Oh, good. Inf it's still oh, it's called the infection bomb. I think this is the full upgrade. Yeah, infection bomb was the level five. What it was named, infecto bomb, shock blaster, plasma whip, N60 storm V2. Okay, yeah. So some of the some of the ammo, uh, the way it's reading the ammo is a little bit different. But we do get a maxed out uh, infector, which is interesting. I just infected them, they're all shooting each other. Blech. <laughs> I'm just kind of messing around with them. Yeah, I'm hitting them with absolute acid. just included like the whole Marcadia segment which is interesting. I know that Sly Cooper also had a Ratchet Clank 3 demo, I don't know if this is the same one or a similar one. If anybody knows you're welcome to clarify in, uh, in the comments but but it, it, but it is nonetheless uh, nonetheless interesting. Let's see the vendor. Oh the vendor's different. Um, the vendor's really different because it's showing the uh, it's got that blue outline, which is not really present in this in this game. I think that's maybe a leftover asset from Ratchet and Clank 2. So I think that's pretty cool. Drive them out of the compound. Yeah, okay. You're also very weak. Just 
just interesting to see this custom build of the game. Because you just wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have context to where, why you're here or what you're doing, which I think is just interesting. Alright, um, rather than to dwell on too much Ratchet and Clank and, uh, when we've got other demos to do, we might just reload, but there's definitely some more stuff we can check out, um, at some point, maybe the multiplayer or something, but I might do them, I might do a separate, uh, a separate look into it at some point. If anybody has a specific demo they want me to delve into more, I might do a separate, uh, video for that, a separate stream, you know? Um, I just want to go through the entire collection and show the variety that we have on offer. And just enjoy the the wonderful library that is the PlayStation 2. Because there's actually there's actually some more uh, great games that we need to cover. I'm not sure what's in the bonus section. Oh, that's just the credits. The videos we get, ma you get making of videos. So Killzone, Crimson Sea, Dynasty Warriors, Ratchet and Clank, Slide Two. I Twitch chat. I don't know if I Twitch chat ended up ever coming out. <laughs> well, good Suzy Three. Thanks for joining in. Take care, bud. All right. Um. Although you leave at this, you leave at um a bad time because I'm actually going to try out Crisis Zone next, which is a spin-off of Time Crisis. Um, this also had an arcade release, of course, but it's pretty cool to be able to play the console version since uh since Crisis Zone isn't really too common nowadays. Um, not to say that it's rare or anything, but it's just less common than the other Time Crisis games, so it's nice to be able to try it out on this demo, which. Which maybe, if, if memory serves, um, you might be able to play this with the GovCon. I think the demo actually lets you, but I can't really, I don't have any means to capture that kind of footage uh, using the GovCon. So maybe at a later date, we might be able to do something with light guns, do some, uh, do like a, do like an arcade kind of stream. Alright, they do vary from the contents of the actual game. If you have a gun con, please use it in place of the controller to enjoy the game. Alright. Yeah. I do actually have a gun con 45 and a gun con 2, so it's nice to know that both are compatible with this game. Um, because that's not always the case Darwin with the Time Square Crisis console games. Opened on the outskirts of London. Within the complex, there are department stores, a hotel, a park, and an office building. It's a complete urban complex. However, the complex has been taken over by a terrorist group called the URDA, led by Derek Lynch. Ooh. Go, go, go! Hurry! Our mission is to liberate Garland Square and suppress the URDA. This is a dangerous operation. So keep your guard up at all times. Roger. Zone. Wow. Out of all the Time Crisis games, this is probably the one that I have played the least, I think. In fact, I don't know if I've actually played this one at all before. Um, but just like any of them, it's bound to be good, so... Loading... Oh, okay. Did I not hit start quickly enough? Alright. Crisis Zone. I'm just going to give this a, a quick attempt with the controller. Action. Okay. 
using a machine gun. That makes sense, because the actual arcade cabinet for this was based on using a machine gun. So this game and Time Crisis Raising Storm like use the use the duck and cover option a bit differently. Rather than you stepping on a pedal and getting away from cover, you're hiding behind a shield. So you're not so instead of just ducking from cover, you're ducking from your this protective shield you have. And in true demo fashion you get no continues, it'll just game over and send you right back to the start, but it's still cool that you can get, you know, a pretty good chunk of the of the demo. Yep, destructible environments. Um Time Crisis games are known for that. Unlockable hidden features, extra weapons and special PlayStation 2 exclusive game modes. Oh yeah, they, they did add some extra content. Pretty cool. Alright, what's the next demo in here? So we went through Crisis Zone. Now we've got Spyro a Hero's Tale. Which, um, probably one of the Spyro games I actually haven't played. So it'll be cool to try out this demo. I don't know why it booted as such. That's a bit unusual. I wonder if it's loading into the game or not. Come on. We are loading from the real hardware, so I suppose this is bound to happen every now and again. Oh. Try and reset that manually, see how we go. We will be able to load into Spyro. Come on, I want to play me some Spyro. Okay, I don't know if this is how it's programmed in the game. If this doesn't work, then we may not have a Spyro demo. I 
think there's a chance that the Spyro demo doesn't work, sadly. Um, we might just move on to the next disc. But just worth noting that I don't know if it's how the disc is programmed or if it's just my copy. Alright. Rip Spyro. Okay, so the next demo disc will be... Um, this is one of the ones I actually had as a kid, because uh, I, wa I, I wasn't able to get a hold of the magazines when I was younger, but I was given this particular demo disc as a gift around about high school time, like when I was just starting high school. Alright, demo disc 41, June 2005. So. Demo 59 euros. Yeah, so some of the, these discs do get coded European and they might have been distributed in the UK and such, but most of these should be, um, most of these should be Australian ones. Alright, so, this one actually has the demo video of Brave on it, Jonas, um, but we're also just gonna, we'll, we'll check that out just out of curiosity, I know you'll want to see that. Um, and the playable demos include LEGO Star Wars, FIFA Street, Robots, SRS Street Racing Syndicate, oh boy, uh, Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, CT Special Forces, SingStar Pop, and iToy Play 2. So we've got a few games we can check out from this selection here. Love that funky demo. demo. Platinum. Okay, pl in Platinum you got iToy Play 2. Playable demos, we got Thief Street, Lego Star Wars, Robots, SRS, Monkey Ball, Sing Stop Pop. And we might quickly check out the Brave video. Or uh, for you, Jonas. <laughs> Alright. It's a very vague video, so I think you'll understand that this is all my only knowledge of this game. PlayStation 2, I honestly, if you played it, let me know. Did you like it? Were you also just as shocked as me to find out this game exists? Again, let me know. Alright, now we'll get into the actual demos themselves. Um, I guess we'll have a look at FIFA Street. I haven't looked at any sports games yet, any FIFA games, so... The, I'm assuming that the street subtitle means that this will deal with the street football rather than the usual uh, simulation style um, football that FIFA usually deals with. Berg, it's at the game. <laughs> oh, 
Oh wow, Faith has been around since 1977. Oh, oh okay. We're gonna have some licensed music. In that case we might uh we might have to leave that. I just saw the patent uh credited there. Sorry about that, we're gonna have to skip FIFA Street. Kind of a good thing that they mentioned the patents at the start. Alright, so the next one I think was Lego Star Wars on the list. Hope everybody's enjoying themselves. Learning a thing or two, if you have any questions about any of the games, let me know. I'm kind of discovering a lot of the content on these demos for the first time myself, as I've only looked through some of them. I've had too many of them to go through them all on my own, so I hope you're enjoying the experience with me, and we can all learn something new together. Alright, yeah, Lego Star Wars. I think when it comes to the first LEGO Star Wars, I've only played this demo. Um, my experience with LEGO Star Wars was more with the second one, and even then I only played a few levels, because until a few years ago I didn't actually own the game. But they're LEGO games, so I'm sure they're, they're, they're all fantastic fun anyway. Skip, can we skip? I'm worried about the music. We can't skip. Alright. We might have <laughs> we might not play Lego Star Wars as well because I don't want to get muted. That's a shame. Uh let's see what's next on that list. We got robots. Robots shouldn't have anything that I know of. Okay. I actually don't know much about the robots game, so perfect time to check it out. Just through this demo. I have been a fan of the film uh since it came out, so if anybody remembers the film. <laughs> It's a good time. It's when Blue Sky did a lot of uh, films that weren't necessarily Ice Age. They did something interesting with this. Oh, so you're in Vivendi as well? Okay. Alright. I have no idea what to expect this from this. This is my son, Rodney. Rodney Copperbottom. He showed great interest in inventing ever since he first saw Big Will. From then on, he never missed an episode of the Big Guy's show. He started inventing things on his own before he could even ride a bike. He really <laughs> took Big Will's motto to heart. You can shine no matter what you're made of. Very cute. The movie is definitely great. Go give it a watch if you haven't recently. Alright, now what are we in for? Slide, hey, even a Rodney. weapon? If you're going okay. to Robot City, you'll need to fix your Wonder Box. I grabbed its blueprint, so you just need to find the pieces. Take a look around, and then come see me behind Mr. Pinhead's shop. Alright. So we got ourselves a little, little platformer based on the film. Yep, there's a jump. That's a kick. Get to collect some nuts and bolts. Ah yes, I've already played a few games uh, on the sh on the stream just from the demo discs alone that have had nuts and bolts for currency. All right. This looks like the kind of game that I would have been really interested to play as a kid when the movie first came out. 
but it, it just kind of has a cute vibe. Talk to hey, people. Rodney, glad you made it. Now, let's practice jumping. See these crates? You can reach the top by jumping. For the really high ones, use your double jump. If you don't quite reach, don't worry. You'll grab the ledge, and then you can lift yourself up. Oh yeah, he's got a decent jump. He can grab. Collecting fancy blueprints and stuff. Slide. Swish. Oh, okay. That slide is like, damn. That's extra. Hey, Rodney! You need to get those parts for your wonder box. You should be able to get them using your jump, double jump, and ledge grab moves. Didn't I get the parts? I'm a little bit confused. Oh wait, I missed a part? Yeah, I missed a part. Yeah, I missed a couple little blueprint thingies. Ah, I see. Does it send me flying or anything? No. Okay. Well done, son. That's all the pieces in this area. I'm going to the town hall. There's some more pieces there. Come find me when you get a chance. Yeah, I think uh, I think the PlayStation 2 or just any sixth-gen console really fit with this with this film, like in terms of modeling and stuff. It looks quite nice. Probably would look even better if I wasn't running through AV capture, but you know, we're keeping the true nostalgic experience here, how we would have all played it back in the day. I do like that they've modeled out the town and you can explore. That's that's pretty cute. Got this posty guy. <laughs> okay. Got some interesting uh, NPCs. I'm pretty sure the demo would not take me there, so what's this town hall uh, Mr. Copperbottom speaks of? I'm guessing it's the big building over there. I can interact with the doors, can you? No? Okay. Hey, kid, where do you think you're going? This street's closed for today's parade. Get out of here. Wow. He's rude. Hey, kid, where do you think you're going? This All right, so it's the camera. Parade. Get out of here, mate. Forget about it. <laughs> I don't know what the town hall is. <laughs> but I could just ditch my dad and just go straight to Robot City. It'll probably tell me I don't have the right money, though. So I seriously thought that was the place to go, but... Blueprints? Wait, so that that's like a mission marker thing? It's showing me things to the right? 
Very constrained little map. Find Rod Rodney's dad on Rivet Town High Street. Okay, so had I not accidentally found that map, I would not know where to go. I tried to go this way last time, and the game's like, nope. Nope. I know I'm just standing here, but I'm actually very busy. <laughs> that's, that's a very uh, self-aware NPC thing to say. Oh yeah, there he is. Well, Rodney, time to test those skills you learned. Hop on this elevator, and it will take you up above the shop. Once you've found all the Wonderbot pieces, bring them to me, and we'll see if we can get them working. Alright, Dad. Dad, Daddy-o. It just seems like they're giving me the start of the game, so... <laughs> because this has been mighty forgiving. Well, except for the part where, uh... They didn't really tell me about the map. Ah, oh, okay. Here we go. You're standing under a zip line. Wait, I'm standing under a zip line? Didn't feel like I was jumping on a zip line. Huh? I I don't get it. I can kick the can. <laughs> I've I've kicked the bucket, chat. See ya. <laughs> Oh, there's more shops over there. Is there another elevator instead of me having to go all the way back? That's a zip line too, I see. Yeah. Oh man. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just didn't latch on before. <laughs> okay. This is the platform. Doesn't seem any quicker to zip line. I mean, to slide. To get there. Alright. It's funny because some demos, you know, will give you less to work with. The the Sly 2 demo actually gave you a fair bit of content, and I remember playing through the demo for Sly 2 many, many times as a kid. Well, there we go. That's it. That's that's game. That one must. That game must have been on a timer or something. Um, but yeah. I think that's charming. I think that would have been a fun game to play if I was a kid growing up. Um, if anybody has played it, let me know. and Or maybe you've just watched the film. Either way, that was pretty cool. What are we in for next? What's the next game that's gonna grace our screens?
Alright, up to robots. Oh dear, we have street racing syndicate. I think this game might have licensed music. Um, it's a pretty bad game. <laughs> it's not very good. It's um, it's also a little bit mature, so definitely go look that game up if you want to watch a funny review or something. I'm sure somebody's played it and reviewed it. It's a weird time. Um, but yeah, it's... We'll move on with that. We might try out some Super Monkey World next. Alright, from memory, the SRS uh, demo also had a lot of loading screens and not a not much actual gameplay time. Because that one I remember trying, thinking, oh yeah, street racing, but uh, you're better off playing Need for Speed Underground, honestly. Or even Juiced. Even Juiced is a better game, trust me. Um, yeah. So moving on. Loading on the next game. By Sega. Good old Sega. Granted that Super Monkey Ball uh, is an arcade game, but I don't know if this one's a port. This might be a sequel of a port. But I do have this game, uh, and I've actually played through it before, and it's pretty fun. So I will be interested to see what's available on the demo. I do have Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. Alright. Main game? Oh, you do have the party mode available to you. I might try the party mode. This is actually where I spent most of my time. But on Monkey Race DX, you've also got Monkey Time. I'm gonna do the Monkey Race. Hi, hi, Mimi, baby. Gone, gone. Let's go with the baby. Charming Banana Road. <laughs> Cue, cue the, uh, cue the monkey time. Old banana. Game settings. Game settings. Yeah, cool. Five laps. Oh, really? All right, we can't change that. So we got five laps around the course. I do have, I do have some nostalgia uh, playing this game, and I mostly would do the monkey race mode with um. With some friends as a kid. Oh, that that sound effect. Yeah, they did change that in the final game. They had the announcer say "Ready, go" instead. <laughs> okay, X throws a power up. I need to push my memory. Bronze little jacks. Oh. We're going around a, around a banana. Time bonus. Maybe I'm just a monkey streamer now. Maybe I just stream games with monkeys on or something. Oh dear. <laughs> so I'm not very good at this. The single player modes are also very challenging. Um, and they definitely teach you to get a hang of the controls better. Time bonus. If, if anyone in chat ever gets a chance, definitely play the arcade version as well. This game can be really fun with a joystick. Oh, that's a speed boost, is it? Oh! Rebound! Ahead. 
you won't be without some some spills and some knockouts playing this. At least I'm not getting pinballed by those stomps. Alright. Completed. You'll have to wait for the full version to continue. <laughs> Alright, that's Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. Thanks for playing our demo. That's a charming little game. So we have CT Special Forces Fire or Effect. Okay. Okay. Games, how how do you do? Huh. Controls. Fire weapons, use, reload. Aim. Okay. Is this a FPS game? Mission 3, the tank gun. Secure the ship, no civilian losses can be tolerated. Okay. So, stealth FPS, I'm guessing? Oh, third person. Okay. Raptor, you're running out of time. You have to locate the command post and deactivate the automatic pilot before the tank can Oh dear. Yeah, these inverted controls. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I repeat, you're running out of time. Okay, Tracy, I'm on my way. Bang. Okay. I don't know much about this game. Definitely let me know if you're if you've played it. Oh, that looks like some help. I'll take that. Block the explosive. Bang. Throw a grenade. Mission failure. Oh dear. Raptor, you're running out of time. You have to locate the command post and deactivate the automatic pilot when the tank is short. Then go down into the cargo hold. Find the explosive charges. I repeat, you're running out of time. Okay, Tracy. I'm on my way.
Okay. <laughs> Any mission frag? I have no idea what I picked up on that. Is that gonna help? Okay, Tracy. I'm on my way. Okay. Oh, can, can, can roll. <laughs> oh, welcome back, Jonas. You actually missed the, uh... You missed... This is the, the demo disc that I had as a kid. They had the video of Brave. We already played the video, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some more Brave content pretty soon. So tune in for that. I'm just trying out this demo of a game called CT Special Forces. Never heard of it. Um, I don't know if anybody in chat or in the YouTube comments has played it, but feel free to let me know. Yeah, no, I'm meant to go down. Oh, I'm meant to go down, yeah. It's been interesting playing through these demo discs because I have discovered some games that I've never heard of and I've never seen them before. And some of, in some cases, I wonder if some of them actually ever left uh, the the demo scene. If they actually ever got completed, I'd like to find out for some of these games. That might be something I do one afternoon, do some more research on the matter. But if anybody wants to tell me uh, through comments, you're more than welcome to. I like learning from others. Interesting to hear everybody's varied experiences on different games. Oh dear, yeah, I keep dying near the same area, so, um, that's CT Special Forces, it's a third-person shooter, um, looks interesting if you're into, if you're into that sort of stuff, um, back to menu, it looks, yeah, to anybody who's in, who's wanting a, wanting a different, uh, kind of shooter experience, I reckon this game could deliver if it got released, which I'm pretty sure it did. This one sounds somewhat familiar, but... CT can sound like a lot of things. Like, I almost thought it was a Counter-Strike game, and it's not. Um, but yeah. So I think there was one more game we were going to try on here. I'm going to skip SingStar, because SingStar has the licensed music, and I don't have the microphones hooked up, and that's not going to happen. Um, so I can't remember if it was iToy or something uh, that was left on this demo disc before we move on to the next one. Um... But yeah, we've got about five more discs after this to go through, so I'm very excited to see what more is to come. I'm pretty sure, like, how we've been going here. Yep. Yeah, so we went through here. We're going to skip Singstar because of music. Platinum, I tweet too. So, might just have a look and see, but it's probably just going to be a little... Probably not going to get far without the camera, to be honest. We'll just see what it boots up. This looks about how I remember iToy 2 to be. iToy 2 and 3 were uh, were very fun games. Um, I think they definitely still, or some of the party games still hold up if you want to, you know, get your friends around to, to play some games. It's definitely still fun. I don't really remember the first one that much. The first one, probably, maybe not so much. I don't remember it, but... The second and third one had some pretty fun game modes, if you just want to do some bowling or the other games like Kitty Loves Me and stuff. Yeah, USB camera not detected. That's fair, um, so we won't be able to progress with that one. So yeah, that's that demo disc complete. I just wanted to see what it would do. Alright, so that's June 2005. Let's see what's up next. 
So that was demo disc 41. I actually have demo disc 42 following right after that, which is July 2005. And I will I'll go over again what's on this demo disc whilst it's loading. So we'll put that in and we'll reset it. Okay, chat. So on this demo disc, we have a demo of Destroy All Humans, Brothers in Arms. We have Super Monkey Ball DX again, but I'm going to skip that because we just played it just now. We have Singstar Pop again, which again, we're not going to play. Uh, Moto GP3, Prince of Persia 2, Burnout 3, Takedown, and Killzone. So we do have some more demos to try on this one. Different games. Uh... If you've played them or are interested, uh, feel free to comment. Yeah, so... Alright. Alright. Let's see. Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30, Destroy All Humans, and we'll skip these last two. Platinum? Oh, Platinum's where you have these. I guess because they were already released at this point, so they're including demos? Interesting. Alright, we'll, we'll start off with Brothers in Arms. U Ubisoft. Gearbox Software. Alright, Brothers in Arms. What do we got here? It seems there are a lot of games that were following the war theme back in the day uh, in the 6th gen era that weren't related to Call of Duty, even though Call of Duty did get its debut in the 6th generation. I think there were a lot of other IPs that were also doing the same thing prior to, to COD in different ways. So um, it was just interesting that um, how much of it. Oh, fair enough, Jonas. Um, actually, my next demo disc I, I just discovered yesterday. My next demo disc actually has a, a demo, a playable demo of Brave on it. Um, but if you if you can't watch now, you can catch it later. But yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you have a good one. I never asked to be squad leader, but I had no choice. Now I've got thirteen soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> thirteen men. Thirteen men. Oh dear. I do want to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the next demo disc, Jonas. So once I get through these ones, I'm gonna I'm gonna play that one. I'm just trying to do this in chronological order of the discs release where I can. But I'm just trying to give everything a little bit of a look. Yeah, uh, probably Jonas, probably. Just before we jump, I finally came to the conclusion. I got word from another platoon that some of our boys dropped in this area. Besides the nice mess of butt it was, they're welcome to this place. I'm sure as shit isn't any easy fire around here. Unless, of course, they find us. Okay, I was able to skip the other cutscenes, but not this one. There's all good. All over. I think I saw a mortar team just back there. Jesus, it's great to see you guys. I spent this morning in a ditch full of water. Oh, okay. This is one of those interactive cutscenes very early on. Um, actually, Call of Duty 5 did this as well. I can't really do much. All I can do is move my camera. Baker, you take heart shot and clear the main road. I'll try to gather up anyone I can find around here. I'll meet you on the beach and we'll try to link up with 4th Infantry. Good luck, guys. Good luck. All right. Yep. So, Captain Harstock is now part of your squad. Oh, okay. Is this is this gonna be like that other game I played yesterday? That was you had to control a squad of troops. I to give a move. I want to move right. I want to stick to aim with the Release to issue the order. Okay, yeah, so this is one of those games where you actually control the platoon of troops, so I actually can't just casually move around. It's a little bit more to that. 
Yeah, alright. So this is one of those games that's a little bit more advanced. Um, so I might not continue this demo, but... Based on a true story, players a couple different characters, control your troops, yeah, okay. So, not knowing much about the game, it's not just a standard uh, first person shooter, it's actually trying to do some other stuff. Alright. So, I guess the next one can be destroy all humans, and then we'll try the next game. Well, we need to see Destroy All Humans in, in a demo, because I actually haven't played the game, but I know that it's a game that many people uh, find nostalgic, so... Let's try it out. Good old THQ. Filmed in pandemic colour. <laughs> Oh wow. Launch destination Earth. Let's go. <laughs> that cow. I can't get over that zany gal. That's so funny. Oh, here I am. I'm the alien. I'm crypto, I see. Oh, I have a jetpack. We can peer into the minds of lower life forms via the cortex scan. You can perform your own cortex scan no. on unsuspecting Earth creatures by no. primitive yet profound. Scan another one. <laughs> I'm scanning the cow's brains. Attention, Earth creature. This planet is now part of the Furon Empire. Your benevolent masters welcome you. At this time, we wish to abduct you for the purpose of scientific research. The procedure will be protracted and invasive. Do you have any objections? Earth creature, I am addressing you. Respond or be vaporized. Oh. <laughs> I don't care how many stomachs you have. I don't have time for this. <laughs> you psychokinesis to mutilate the, the creatures. Have evolved the astounding power of psychokinesis. Target an object or creature. Then hold the L1 button. Keep holding, then tap the triangle button to lift the target into the sky. <laughs> your health shows the amount of concentration you have remaining. Concentration represents I'm just how eating much these poor cows. It is drained Ooh. by using the mix. Hold L1 button, then hurl the bovines by double tapping triangle button. Hurl the bovines. Yep, that one can go into the lake. Kaspoosh. Oh my god, these poor cows. Prepare to be... Yeet. <laughs> oh, Martha, you didn't tell me we was having barbecue for dinner. Wait a minute, that ain't steak. That's holy mother, Martha. Give him the shotgun. Attention, to do kill the human farmer. Just hold the R one button. Try it now. The okay. Of the old 
Extract his brain. Oh, wow. Okay. I am new to this series, so... I just... Oh, I just took his brain out. Oh my god. Plus five DNA. <laughs> this is so chill. This is so... Wow. Kill the farmhands? Oh dear. I didn't defeat him. Get zapped, mate. Do I have to extract their brains too? Oh, there's a chicken. <laughs> they just ate the chicken. <laughs> oh my, this this game sure is something. Ms. Turn of Seed. We got a call called the Coppers. Dixon over the other side of the state road. Said he heard some pretty strange noises coming from over this way. What is that? A new silo? Crypto! That human law enforcement officer is attempting an unauthorized entry of your spacecraft. If those pea brains were to get their hands on your quantum deconstructor, they could rip a hole in the space time continuum! Oh, the furonity! Vaporize them, Crypto! Scepter <laughs> 2. Crypto, my radar shows more humans approaching. Hurry to the saucer! Alright. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. Want to beam up? I've done enough mayhem. Destroy the human. Destroy the house. Oh, Dr. Ray. Okay. I can switch. I'm just annihilating a small town. It's no, no problem. <laughs> they destroy the human dwellings. Complete. Oh, great! The human.
human military industrial complex. We can't allow them to alert their leaders to our presence. Exterminate them! Now! Open fire! Let's go, Shannon. All right. That's the Royal Humans. <laughs> That's the first one, huh? Interesting. Might be something to play down the line. Alright, the other two we won't try. So we've got Burnout 3, Kill Zone, Motor GP. Try out Kill Zone. Proceed through the slums, okay. I know the kill zone games are pretty uh pretty well well revered. Well reviewed. Well received, whichever is more appropriate. Um oh, that's a grenade. Figure out the buttons. All right, you got a primary and secondary fire. Okay. Ah! Oh dear. Kill him. Oh. All right. Well, I won't really have to delve into that one too much, but you know, it's renowned game kill zone and I'm sure it's a I'm sure it's a great time. And, uh, look, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Winter 2004. This is also the very first one. Pretty interesting. Four playable characters. Oh, okay. It's not just a Radic or whatever his name was. I I don't remember. Um, interesting. All right. We've already done some burnout games on here before, so we might just check out Prince of Persia. I think this is the Two Thrones game, but I'm not too sure, so we'll give it a bit of a... We'll check it out. Because I've only played the first one. Oh, it's Warrior Within. So the two thrones must have been afterwards. I think this was the Prince of Persia game that went really edgy with its uh, aesthetic. I remember the reviews about it. We really are being thrown back to 2004 now, chat.
Oh dear. This one seems a bit hack and slashy, just off the first uh, first observation. I remember this game having uh, interesting combos for the time, and it definitely shaped uh, what the team would lay later do with uh, the Assassin's Creed games. Oh my. The lack of music is a little bit strange, but they must have just added that in later. I guess it's for the best. Um... Movement tut oh, movement tutorial yet. This definitely was the was the era of edgier games, I think. Oh, we got some slow motion mechanic here, similar to like what Kingdom Hearts Street drop distance would do years later. We got the weapon, now I've got dual, dual scimitar, alright. Drink from bodies of water, that's, that's a mechanic from the previous game. He had to stoop so low though, going from drinking from pure fountains to, to seawater. Um, or rainwater. Yeah, so it's missing some sound effects too. Doing some slow mo stuff. I didn't think I had a time dagger or anything, but I suppose they're doing that because it's fun. Alright. Get up to the top of the boat. <laughs> Oh no, it's this lady. I don't actually know who she is, but like, they, they just... They just had to put her, uh, weird camera shots. And we get a boss battle in a demo. Uh, well, this is a demo lady, so I am trying my best. I didn't call myself nothing. <laughs> I feel you are failing. You little oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this game really dialed up the edge. And I'm dead. Alright, that's Prince of Persia Warrior Within. It, it really, okay, now I understand what they say when they say that this game uh, has a lot of edge. It dialed the edge up to 11 in comparison to the previous one, which followed more of the uh, 
original roots, I think. Um, hey, I'm sure it's a fun game, but I can just tell that compared to the previous one, it's something different. Alright. That's probably it for that demo disc. Uh, we did have some we did have some repeat stuff. And if there's any particular demo that people want me to take a closer look at, I will be happy to do that either on a future stream or something along those lines. Alright, so the next demo disc comes from number 43, so next disc after the one we just played, so it's August 2005. Pretty cool. Oops, putting that in. Exciting stuff. Alright, what we got on this one? On this demo disc we got Brave, Formula 1 2005, Tekken 5, Worms Mayhem, we got YS, Ark of Nepishtim. On bonus we've got um, Final Fantasy X2, Forgotten Realms, Demon Stone. Don't know much about that one. Prova Soccer 2, Prova Soccer 4, sorry, Soul Calibur 2. Ah, good game. And Spyro Heroes Tell, so maybe we'll be able to load up this demo instead. <laughs> maybe this one will actually work. In videos. Oh, we got these. There's an SG1 game. Like a Star Wars. Little Combat, Shaolin Monks. Total Overdose, God of War. Interesting stuff. Might quickly have a look at Soul Calibur 2 whilst we're here in this menu to see which version this is. Because um, each version of Soul Calibur 2 had a different bonus character from memory. So the GameCube version had Link. Um, I think with this setup it doesn't matter, but we'll stick with 50 just to be safe with the card. Yep. Um, Yeah, so Link's in the GameCube one, um, and I can't remember, I think I think Heihachi might be in this version, like Heihachi Mishima from Tekken, and in the Xbox version they maybe have Spawn. Soul Calibur 2. Hey hey, so this game originally released on the Namco 246 hardware, I believe, so getting a, getting a console version on the PS2 made sense. Um, I guess it's just arcade mode? Yep. That's just two characters, Cassandra and Nightmare. I don't really remember how to play either, but I guess we'll pick Nightmare. I somewhat remember him. A solemn madness hones his blade. Offer your soul. Let us dance. Battle one. Fight. That's a block, yep. Oh, 
Oh, that's 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 an awkward KO there. Got him that time. You win. Fight. All right, now we'll see. Let's see how we got this one, chat. I picked the guy with the big sword. Can I get a ring out? There we go, we got a ring out. <laughs> That's the thing in Soul Calibur, you can just knock him out of the ring. Oh, yes. Classic Astaroth. Okay, so it's pretty cool that um you can even access the command menu. So it looks like um it looks like you could play through the arcade mode, but you'd only have Nightmare and Cassandra to play as, which is pretty cool. Um the fact that you can play them both and just play the arcade mode normally. I think the only thing that would stop you is if there's a timer. Um but other than that, you've got like a pretty sizable demo here for Soul Calibur 2. Soul Calibur 2. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Alright, we'll try and see what the next demo may be. Try out Spyro and Heroes Tales, see um see if it actually loads. Since the other demo couldn't load it. All right, we can finally try some of Spyro a Heroes Tale. I played a few of the Spyro PS2 games, but this is one of them that I sadly missed out on. Dragon Village Start Tutorial, uh, Hunter Challenge, Sergeant Bird Maxi Game. All right, let's do the Dragon Village then, since that's going to be more to do with Spyro. Because I think this game was similar to Year of the Dragon, that you got to play other characters. Um, but that's kind of all I all I know about this game. Hard secondary fire, both attack, talk, charge, jump, glide, status, first person. Yeah, all right. Oh, he's n nasty, like a nork.
leaders. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, he looks like Ripto, but he isn't. He's got the same color scheme. Like, who's he meant to be? I'm not really up to date with my Spyro lore, but yeah, he just yeah. Go and see money bags outside his shop. He'll tell you what to do first. Okay, I can't. I can't fly or anything yet. I've got to admit, it's pretty lush and colourful like the original. Hit the sheep. Meh. Sheepy sheepy. Can't fly or anything. any dash attack? I think the... Oh, you got a headbutt move. Okay, you headbutt these. Get, get the money. Alright, money bags. You look less threatening in this game. Don't bother coming back here until you've got 500 gems, okay? <laughs> wow, they made him like really obviously a jerk. Collect 500 gems to access his shop. Right off the bat, they're like, yo, you're going to have to deal with money bags. No, I didn't get any gems for the, for the sheep. Just seems like an old-fashioned thing to do, you know, dragging each sheep because they're hungry. Is this strange doohickey? Probably gonna come into the story somehow. Oh, I can dash, never mind. Bring up on screen information. Yep, that brings up the HUD for me, that's helpful. Can't destroy any of these. MB, yep. See, I don't know where else I could go where I'd actually get some cash money. You can smash these. Yeah, I had a feeling, but also they looked kind of dangerous if I remember Jack and Dexter, so... Oh, you know, that should, that brought me to the 500 I need. Deal with this guy. Alright, money bags, pay up. I mean, I pay up to you. But pay up your promise. Browse my fine wares, Spyro. 
Ammo for flame both secondary fire. Withstand an extra hit. Let me get the key. That's it, eh? Alright, so... It'd be nice if you told me what to do with the key. Here to tell me? You already bought the last bit. Why don't you use it to get some more gems to spend with me? <laughs> wow. All right. Well, this door looks like it could use a key. Oh, Fox has a big head. He just flew in there. <laughs> I feel like I could have initially done that. Stand on the way. Break the switch. There's a fairy here. Is she like a checkpoint fairy? Ah, yes, one of the dragons. Ah, Master Spyro, you must be setting out to stop Red from using the dark gems to take over the world. Yeah, something like that. Hey, who's Red? Ah, Red was once an elder like myself. I'd tell you the whole story, but I'm old. I take a really long time to do it, so... Hey, at least he's honest. <laughs> so, how about I just tell you how to destroy the Dark Gems instead? Woo, close one. Yeah, do that. To destroy Dark Gems, you should use your Horn Dive. Horn Dive, okay. Yep, double jump. Oh, I couldn't double jump before. Alright. Alright, that destroys him. Cool. Alright, that's blocked off for now. But this area is now lush and bright again. It does feel pretty reminiscent of the earlier games though. Like they've captured that essence. Another one of those special gems that I saw before. Light gem. You'll need to collect these to power special gadgets. Alright. It is a demo, but yeah. That was pretty solid. Coming fall 2004. Pretty cute stuff, the Spyro games. I remember this one being pretty comedic, like when I was reading reviews and stuff as a kid, because I never got access to the game. I might be able to try out Tekken. It seems Namco was uh, bringing out their hard hitters around this point. Um, some of their some of some ports of their really good arcade games. So I have to recommend a game to get somebody into into fighting games or just into Tekken. I definitely would recommend Tekken Five just because um, there's a lot of great content on there. Tekken 5 is really solid and, you know, it, it's still fun. And it also, when you get when you get the full game, it uh, it includes the first fir the arcade versions of the first three games. So if you wanted to try out the earlier games, it's a good way to do that without having to spend bank finding the others. 
This cutscene is actually pretty cool. Um, it's it's in it's in the main game, but uh, yeah, it shows uh, it shows the machine is fighting off the jacks, and then Heihachi, quote unquote, dies. Um, he dies the first or second time. Um, <laughs> graphically, this game is still really good. Oh, it just threw me straight into a battle. It didn't actually give me a let me pick a character. Final round. All right, they have me playing as Long Feng. Versing Jin. I actually, don't know how to play Feng, but it is the it is the game. It's just yeah, not letting you select a character, which just surprised me. Even Soul Calibur let you select somebody. I guess I game over it really quickly, <laughs> but um, I'm a big fan of this game. Uh, this game definitely um, solidified my interest in fighting games and Tekken. So yeah, I do I do recommend it if you want to try any of the games. Tekken Five is definitely the one with the most content. Um, Tekken Four is also really great, but if you wanted to have a way to play a variety of them at once, then I'd definitely recommend Five. It's it's very available, and you can play the first three as well if you feel like going for a for a deeper dive into the series. So it's cool that they, they had demos for it. That's kind of what interests me into getting this particular demo disc, because when I saw it, it had Tekken 5 on it. Um, yeah, we'll be ready to, uh, to try out the other stuff too. Alright. Might be able to try Formula 1, but I'm not sure. Um, we'll do that one in a bit, but we'll try Worms 4 Mayhem. Please note that this title takes 10 seconds to load before going back to load screen. Oh, okay. It's nice of them to note that. I guess it also just depends how they sent the demo in to the, you know, to the people compiling the discs. Whether or not that they could, how they could program them on here. But hey, worms, worms games are really fun, and I don't think I have any of them, so this would be a, this could potentially be a good way to try it out through the demo. Ah, uh, code masters. <laughs> I haven't seen them, uh... Yep, Team 17. Well, I mean, they're still around making Worms games, so that's cool. There's quite a variety of Worms games in the series, so... If anybody in chat or in the YouTube comments wants to wants to mention which one they played and which one they enjoyed. I guess we'll go for a quick game. Fire, jump, weapons panel. Okay, let's see. Even if it only gives you the one map, that could still be a really uh, a really solid demo to be able to try this game out. Oop, CPU. What's he doing? He's moving over here. He's setting up a bazooka. Oh, he bazookaed one of my men. Oh, no. The enigma that is the mystery crate. Okay. 
That's his name? My worm's name is Bosnia, and he looks like he's dressed Scottish. <laughs> oh, worms. I have no idea where I'm going, but the fact that this is a 3D view, most of the worms games I've played were in 2D. Okay. Don't actually know how to how to pick a weapon. I didn't actually. It said fire with thing. There we go. Weapons panel. This is how I select uh, different things. Can I use the same uh, sniper rifle from here? Roll up for the mystery crate. Oh no! Did I run out of time? Sid 3PO. <laughs> These names. I definitely need to get hang of the uh, the 3D space idea. <laughs> Invertebrate apparatus. Oh my god. Spookster. <laughs> Am I just- I'm just stuck in here now. I am just mighty stuck. <laughs> that was bad. I think I wounded- wounded my men. Yep. <laughs> Could that crate spin the match? <laughs> it could if I actually used them. Holy hand grenade. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my. Thank you for all the cards. <laughs> Oh, I would have so much fun playing this, oh, if I had more time to get a handle on this. Wait, what? Where did that- was that a mine? I thought that was a teleporter. Oh, rip. Seriously. Oh. I definitely would have to play the tutorial if I got the game for this. Random detonation, shun, 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 shun. Maybe I don't need to charge it that much. Am I gonna hit him? Nah. <laughs> I shouldn't have charged it this heavily. Oh no, he's got the drop on me. He's dropping cows? Oh, I got hit by cows. Oh no. It's been nice knowing you. Aww. No, you haven't, Jonas. It's the next game. I'm just trying out Worms for Mayhem. Um... It immediately just throws you in with uh, no with no explanation. So, I've only played the two D games. So, this is a little bit new to me. This whole three D space thing. But um, I might run over here and get that crate. My team is nearly dead. So, um... oh, I got some health. I needed some health. All right. Uh, I think the bazookas. Is... No, actually, we'll try a grenade. We got twenty. We got yeah. We got a grenade. 
think that should work. Dang it. I should have angled it. He's over there. Grab this if you want to stay in the battle. <laughs> this looks like it would be a lot of fun. I love the Worms games, but... I definitely would need to play through a tutorial of this or something. Or just play through this demo a hundred times. Like, I'm gonna have to get a handle on this. This looks like a lot of fun, though. Spookster! It's a pretty solid demo. If I if I practice this, I'm sure I could have a good time just with this demo alone. Spookster? Yeah, Spookster's stuck in the building, so... Because I fell through the cracks and, uh... I couldn't get out. He fell through the roof, and I can't get this character out, which is a, a bummer. So I might just try and throw a grenade. Did that blow blow a hole open for me? Yeah, it did. Oh, that's just great. <laughs> this game's making puns like I am. He got a jetpack. <laughs> I think the I think the interesting thing about this demo and the demo uh, the demos I was playing previously is they they kind of lacked in music, which is probably either the music wasn't done yet or maybe they just omitted it for the sake of space. There could be a couple of reasons. Um, Human. Oop, I went through the teleporter. Now I'm out here. Okay. Jump, little worm, jump. Oh no, don't get stuck. Oh, here he is. Oh, I'll shoot him with a shotgun. We do have a shotgun. It's not that button. Yeah, this is the button, so I can aim. I wish I used this before, but... Whoa! It's very, very floaty controls. They don't want you spending too much time on this. There we go! Haha! <laughs> Shotgun! Oh, I get two shots. Bang! And that's how we do it. <laughs> Okay, I just made him lose like 50 HP or what. Oh nice Jonas, sounds good. So far the CPU has had really good aim to hit me with these bazookas. You miss! <laughs> Wait, do I have another 12 minutes of this game? <laughs> Alright. Gonna, gonna... Oh, I have a poison arrow. Let's try that out. Surely poison would have like a long-term status effect or something. He's making faces at me. He's like... No, I can't aim for peanuts. Oh, now I'm sick. I'm sick, no! Louis sick! <laughs> oh my. <laughs> In before dead. Oh, he's dropped dynamite on me. I'm pretty sure I'll be I'll be dead before the time is up. Oh I am one fully sick worm. Spookster! Oh Spookster is the one that's stuck in the house. I blow the house down? Ha ha ha. Pun not intended, but it works. Is he still stuck? No, I got it. I got him out. Yay.
one bubble trouble and one trooper. Wait, trooper? I'm just picking up crates. That dinamite. Hurry up! Okay, let me throw something. Oh yeah, we'll do. Um that's probably hang on, microphone. Can't really turn it up too much. Uh probably that will do. Oh no! I got blown up! Ouchies! I am the dead. Oh, this one. Yeah, I shot with a poison arrow before. Maybe I'll actually have better aim this time. Okay. Let's try and aim a little bit higher. Or maybe I need to hold it longer or something. Got him! Youch is hurting. <laughs> His name is Youch. <laughs> Youch. Yeah, youch. <laughs> Doctor Blessings cure all. <laughs> this game is cute. Oh no, bro. He's fully sick. Shoot you with the shotgun. Can I knock him off? <gasps> oh, I thought he was going to fall in the water. Looked like I almost got him, you know. <laughs> Oh, he just grabbed that health. Oh, he's so smug. Look at him. <laughs> I guess since he's a worm, I could say he's a smug bug. Oh, he grabbed both health crates. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna defeat me like easy. Look at my health. Bring on the mines. Oh, look at that flying buffalo. Oh, oh, that looked a little bit framey. That might just be, um, that's probably a demo thing. Oh, yep, he shotgunned me back. Bosnia is history. I don't know how to feel about that. Ouch, that's sad. That's not fair. Poor Bosnia. They deserve better. <laughs> uh, it's all right. We'll, uh, we'll avenge, we'll avenge, we'll avenge him. Come on. Oh, oh. This is actually, yeah, this is the game being a little bit framey, I think. I think, I think, yeah, I think this must be an earlier build of the demo. Good or bad, who knows. Oh, because it's a question mark? I get you. Spookster! Oh no, Spookster's about to drown. Spookster's about to drown where he is. That's. Ugh. Where? Where? <sighs> Oh, that was a mine? I just narrowly avoided a mine? Aha! I see him. Yeah, we'll hit you with the bazooka from here. I think. Dang it! I think that's gonna damage me more than him. Tools for fools. <laughs> Ody. Oh, now he got me. Oh, he missed? Pepan. Not Pepe, but Pepan. 
All right. Yeah, sure. Let's let's overkill the bazooka. Why not? I fear no, I, I I don't fear death. All right. Did that work? <laughs> no, I don't think that actually worked. Yeah. Here comes Sid 3 po Not a pun at all. He didn't hit me with that. This will get you pink again. <laughs> Oh, that's right, There, you can poke them. I remember now. Gosh, I'm having a flashback. I used to play this so much on um other consoles, like the, the DS and a few other platforms that I tried it on. I think I even tried a mobile phone version of this game. Dang it. Alright. I did not expect this demo to go as long as it was, chat. They literally just gave me a free game. <laughs> it's alright. He's probably gonna blow me up like right now and game over. <laughs> I don't actually know how many worms I have, but one of them's already died. I only lost a health from that? That looked like a full hit. <laughs> I will get you! <laughs> alright, Pepin. Do it for the may maze. Okay. Sentry gun, sniper rifle. How strong those would actually be. Mail, tail mail. Jetpack. Trooper. Holy hand grenade. <laughs> One shotgun. You got unlimited bazooka and grenade. Yeah, let's try the. Try the grenade, I suppose. Oh no, that bounced too far. <laughs> Thanks, he's way around the landscape. Where's he going? Oh, to get a crate. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like this demo suffers from the occasional like frame drop when you pick up a uh pick up a collectible item, but the actual gameplay itself is very playable. Cuz this is all from the real hardware. Oh, is he going to like poke me? Oh, he's going to hit me with dynamite. That's it. Game over for me. Surely. Yeet! And... I think... I think that's almost it. I think this is my last worm. Teen disease? Oh! Yeah, that just killed me. <laughs> Teen disease! <laughs> Oh deary me. <laughs> yeah, indeed. That's a disease. The team got disease. Game over, yeah? That's game over. Come on. You guys just won, yo. Oh, Pippin, I got one more, uh, one more <laughs> unit that's alive, somehow. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna poke him. I'm sure it'll be fun for you guys to see him get poked. Prod. Which is a very, very intense poke. Poke! Yeah, that's it. Just a poke. Very strong prod. And... <laughs> Oh, 
pain disease what would look. Alright. I put dynamite on his head. Just want to see how big this explosion is, bang. I'm obviously going to lose, but yeah, there we go. Will always be remembered as useless. <laughs> the ouch is gone. Yeah, clap, clap, clap for the other worm team <laughs> because I just kamikazied. <laughs> All right, time for the next demo. All right, yeah. <laughs> Generate new game modes with the switch button. Go on, spoil yourself. Wow. You know what? I really want to get a Worms game for the PS2 now. I'd love to play this on stream. Maybe get a, maybe get, maybe get another player to play with me, like my brother or something. I'm sure he'd play. This could be fun to watch. Let's go. All right. What you've been waiting for. I already tried Tekken, Worms, uh, I tried Soul Calibur and some other stuff. Now we're gonna load up Brave. We're gonna see what Brave is about. Because all I have seen is a demo video from the previous volume disc. This game has eluded me for years, so to actually finally have a playable demo for it is pretty cool. Brave, The Search of the Spirit Dancer. Oh, okay. There's a subtitle for it too. I played this really strange platformer yesterday. I already forgot what it's called, but it felt unique, but at the same time it felt very samey. So, um, actually, it was on one of these other discs here. I need to remember what it was called. But if anybody, um, you could you could probably see it on yesterday's video, which um, they will be uploaded to YouTube pretty soon. So if you're new here and you missed out on yesterday, uh, they will be uploaded to this channel here. I will be archiving them both. So thank you all for watching, and we're gonna play some Brave now. Let's see what we're in for. Ooh. Fear not, young warrior. I am not your foe. Who are you? I am the wolf spirit, and I can show you the way to spirit dancer. If you help me, this forest Ooh. is overrun with evil black wolves. My pack have been slain or chased into hiding. A mighty warrior like you could surely clear the forest of these evil. Uh. Yes, I will help you. Then slay all the evil wolves in this forest, young warrior. And then I will show you the way to Spirit Dancer. Huh. Well, we don't know what part of the game this is sampling, Jonas, but it is interesting to see uh, what this demo has on offer. Press triangle to fire an arrow from your bow. I think a lot of games... Uh, it, We're trying out different control schemes, like different weapons for projectiles. This is just surreal for me, actually playing a demo, because I literally have known nothing about this game for years other than the demo video from the previous disc. And now to have this. 
it's just it's blowing my mind <laughs> it's absolutely blowing my mind slap the tree what this tree whoops hold down triangle and release it to perform a power shot little tree gives you a slapstick This is spirit energy. Shamans must collect this energy to increase their powers. Alright. I slapped that tree. Didn't do nothing. Just gave me energy. Slapstick. This is a dream catcher. Find these to restore your health. I can whack these shrooms. Oh, this poor wolfie. Alright, gotta gotta jump and double jump ability. I'm slapping the trees. Boing. Triangle uses arrows. There was a way to obtain the stick. Hmm. Maybe not in this demo, because I can crouch. Oh, here we go. Our first enemies. Hold R1 to lock onto an enemy. Arrows will aim automatically while locked on. Okay, so here we've got some Zelda type uh, combat mechanics. Yeah, this feels very Legend of Zelda. This game seems very interesting. The thing, the thing about it is, it, it follows this shaman theme, and another game series. Oh, this quiver will give you more arrows. Nice. And I think, I think this whole shaman theme was also used in a, uh, in the Tack games. And those ones I did play as a kid. I played Tack Two: The Staff of Dreams, and more recently I tried to play the first one, but I got stuck in the game. I'm sure there was a way to obtain the stick. Well, this tree just came back. I guess they regrow and regen, which could get kind of confusing if, uh, if I need to uh, backtrack. I think I came from over here. Phoenix, welcome, welcome. You came just in time. I'm playing a very strange game that I've known nothing about for years. It's called Brave. Um, you play as this shaman kid. You can shoot arrows and you've got a little tomahawk. Um, it's kind of giving me tack vibes while also being very Legend of Zelda in its combat. I just defeated a bunch of like shadowy wolves. And Jonas here seems to be telling me that I can slap sticks, but I've tried and I can't can't seem to slap sticks. They just break and I get energy from them. I don't actually know where to go. I'm just kind of enjoying the demo until the timer runs out, because this is one of the later demo discs that has a timer. So if you muck around too long, the game will just send you back to the menu. I can smack some shrooms. This game looks very pretty, you know? Like, I've never heard of anybody playing this game, and for years I've only ever seen just just a demo video on one of my other demo discs that we already went through. Oh, it's a porcupine. He's trying to spiky spike me. Let's try and hit him. What's your problem, mate? I'm only firing at you because you're firing at me. Gimme, gimme. 
I guess there's 11 more wolves around that I need to defeat. The, the big wolf spirit guy. Ah, here we go. Oh god. That one attacked me. No, 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 get off me, get off me. Wait, target the other one, target the other one. Get off me, get off me! Ah! Oh, how did I do that? I like uppercut it out or something. Here we go. Now I'm doing the Zelda lock on thing. Shoot all the arrows on him. I woke up the other one. Get away, get away, get away! No! I am the dead. And I am back here at this menu. At this at the start where this poor wolf is here. All dead. Okay. This is really this is really fascinating. We've we've played through a fair few games. Um today we've got three more demo discs to go through before um before this wraps up, and, but I'll be uploading both parts to YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for still tuning in. I hope you're enjoying yourself, and uh, let me know what else you'd like to see. Ouch. Don't hit those spiky things. There were some wolves here before, weren't there? Okay. I guess because of a checkpoint? I don't know if this kid has a name. Surely Brave isn't his name. I think Brave just refers to the fact that he's a brave warrior. The wolf referred to him as. Yeah. It's been a fun time. We even played Worms Fall Mayhem and now I really want to go and buy that. <laughs> if I find it. I'd love to play that on stream sometime. Get a friend over and do some co-op. Would be fun. Really, I'm just enjoying the scenery. When else am I going to get to play this game? I've never found it. Never seen it. I don't know if this game ever uh, left development. You know? I honestly would like to know if someone's played it. Like, or actually no, it did leave development because you said you you said you said own it, Jonas. Yeah, you have the game. Sorry. I've played so many games today and yesterday where, um, where the games, you know, I've never heard of outside of that demo disc. So I think some of those games never left development. Oh, I don't like that. Stab, stab, stab! Hit you with them arrows! Zelda style. Come on. Come on, Shaman Link. To quote Jabalba, um, Behold, the power of the Shaman! I know it's the wrong Shaman game, but hey, both were on the PS2, so. Collect some of that energy. Yeah, the last wolf doesn't die, they just leave it there. I think the only issue with this map is that it's pretty easy to get lost. It's not super clear where everything is, but I'm assuming that it's all just one enclosed area. They just want me to find all the wolves. Yeah. Um. Alright. So we'll see what happens first. If I defeat if I defeat all the wolves or will the timer for the demo run out? What is this? Some shiny rocks here? Oh I can do like a, a bar like a jump dive thing? Okay, you can smack down. Normally you have a map. Sorry, Brave. I have no further help for you at this time. Oh, his name actually is Brave. Okay. First person camera. Oh, okay. I can I guess I can use the energy to heal myself or something. Oh no, it boosts me? It gives me a buff? Yeah, that dream catcher heals me. Suddenly my HUD looks like a weird colour and I'm wondering if it's like an earlier asset. I'm absorbing from the from the wilderness around me, that's kind of cute. 
That's some cute symbolism there. Alright. Yeah. Oh, this looks like somewhere I haven't been to before. Like a temple or something. Ooh. Oh, there's a map now? Yeah, you're right, the map wasn't there before, and now it is. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know if that was on purpose, if I triggered an event, or did the game just decide to give me a map. I didn't even notice, because the map wasn't there before, was it? I swear it wasn't. There was a lot less going on the screen before. Oh, okay, it was there. Then I'm just blind. <laughs> Sorry, chat. I'm just so absorbed in looking around the world of this game, because I really have thought about this game for years, and I was like, did I dream this up? Because I did play the demo, I did play the video demo earlier on the stream, just to show, like, what I witnessed as a kid. And that was all I had to go off of. U -W -U oh my what's god! This? Um, my my sounds are turned down, but thank you so much for the resub, Icarus. Oh my gosh, thank you. How are we doing, bud? I'm playing more demos today, and I'm playing a demo of this game called Brave on the PS2. It did apparently come out because Jonas here in chat has it and has played it, but I've never played it. This is my first time actually trying the game, and it it's it's cute. It's like a neat little uh, platformer with like Zelda kind of combat controls. But you're like a little shaman kid. I'm trying to find some more wolves to fight. Doing okay though, I'm in my element. I'm playing PS2 games. <laughs> I, had, I went through my whole collection of uh, PS2 demos and we played half of them yesterday and I've got three more discs to go through today and yeah. Some good vibes, playing some random demos, some of these games I've never heard of. <laughs> played some weird stuff yesterday, but I also played some nostalgic classics, so I hope people are enjoying themselves. Oh, it's another uh, porcupine hedgehog thing. Mate, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be throwing arrows at you if you weren't spiking me. Just saying. I'm slapping a lot of trees because they seem to regen my energy. Hang on. Is there some wolves on this mountain or something? That must mean what it means. Can we go up there? How do we get up there? I don't know. Okay, I feel a beating heart. Why is there a beating heart? I, I don't know. There's controller vibration and a beating heart. Oh, what's this? Can I go? Can I crawl? Can I crawl in here? Crawl in there. You can do it. Can you fit? No, apparently not. This demo is probably going to time out at some point. But I'm enjoying it. Alright. Oh, track? Oh, I could track the footprints? Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that. The game hasn't told me anything about this up until this point. So I found a paw print. Oh, that explains the heartbeat now. I'm tracking the paw prints. Honestly, Jonas, I might do that. It's just, um... Now that I'm out of lockdown, I might be able to actually track down a copy locally. We'll see how we go. I'm definitely- I definitely try to buy locally. That's more what I rely on, um, personally. Because I find that online people overcharge a lot. But I'll definitely consider it if I- if it gets- if I get that desperate. Because I do still have a few games to go through, um, this month. We'll be playing Ratchet & Clank 2 and 3. 
and we'll see from that point on what else we'll play, depending on how quickly I get through those games. Come on, we're tracking the wolf. I'll, I'll definitely do some research on this game, see, um, see if I can track it down. Here we go. There's some more bad boy wolfies. That one's asleep. Take that, take that, take that! I know, right, Phoenix? I feel that way too. Death's gonna, Death's gonna need to catch up. Oh, die, Wolfie! These are the evil ones, because they're, like, cursed by shadows and stuff. I had the good wolf tell me so. Alright. Is there another one around he over here somewhere? It's the only way we're gonna be able to manage it, Jonas. It's just, you know, keeping safe, so lockdowns and stuff are inevitable. Like even though they even though like here they're kinda aiming to to, re to heavily reduce that, I still think it might happen because uh we need to we need to keep people safe. I just definitely I just definitely miss getting out and being able to actually you know access more games because <laughs> but it's been it's been good for what it's worth I've been able to stream a lot more for you guys and I've got so much more lined up but some of it some of the content that I want to do involves me having to actually leave my house and go film so yeah especially my arcade content I can't do my arcade content if I'm in lockdown so Look at these bunnies! Look at these phoenix! There's so many cute bunnies in this game. I just thought I'd mention- look at them! They're all like, wee. And I'm glad Brave doesn't hurt them, see? Like, any other animal I target will show a little blue aura that I can shoot them. I'm glad you can't hurt the bunnies. They deserve to- they deserve to be- They deserve to run around freely and not get attacked by these evil wolves. Alright. Uh, we can't bring up this map any bigger, can we? This this game hasn't timed out. The way I'm just amazed. It's still letting me play, you know? And we've got other games to go through as well, so I can't sit on this all night. Ow. Yeah, there's the I know they're so cute, the bunnies. Oh, it's taking me back here. Or is this a different temple? This looks like the same one I was at before. I think it's blocked off because of the demo, which would make sense, you know. I will, I will find you. See, I thought this would be, I thought this would be a very quick and short demo. I did not expect to be doing this much. Not that I'm complaining, but I still have three more discs worth of content to go through. Yeah, I, f I figured, Jonas, the red ones are the wolves. The blue one seems to be where I've marked a tracking spot. Um... It says there's one right next to me here, but I don't see it. Oh, unless that's a porcupine I'm attacking here. Oh, they're moving around on the map. They're not consistently in the same place. There he is. He's running away. I'm gonna hunt this bugger. Come back. He's trying to run. Where is he? Did he go in the tree or something? I don't know where he went. He's here, but he's... He's being sneaky. Come out of the trees, Wolfie. I know you're around here. The video game tells me you're here. <laughs> oh, this is... I saw him! Yep, now it's doing the heartbeat thing. Can I track him? Can I track him? Well, it's telling me I'm close by. It's giving me the little heartbeat thing to say that he's nearby. 
This game's trying some interesting stuff. It's a shame that it got- it's a shame that it kind of, like, disappeared into obscurity. Because this game's doing some interesting stuff. Um... I think this particular wolf just is afraid of me. See, it's... <sighs> Give me a quiver. Ow. I gotta stop hitting myself with those. I don't know where that wolf went. Um... That one's like, oh, well, I'm a flea. Where'd he go? Do they just like go invisible or something? Like, you saw him and now he's gone. The dot's here, but he's not there. Oh, this is just, yeah. Alright, well, at the time I record this, it is 11 pm, so I can't dwell on this demo forever because I've still got to get through the other games and. I definitely have some other stuff to do tomorrow, but... Yep, Trek. <gasps> oh, the bunnies! There's a bunny! What the bunny doing? No, bunny, come back here! Bunny! What did that do? I summoned the bunny. Maybe that just opened the next area for me or something? Because I got a blue dot now. Yeah. There's some interesting stuff here. This looks like it's a checkpoint or something. I don't know. Help system? Give me all the help you can. Only help me when I'm stuck. I want no help at all. <laughs> Just the way it's worded. Alright. We might um uh, we might we might move to the next demo, but um Brave. Actually, very cool. It's, it's a shame that I've never seen this game, or never played it until now, but I'm glad that I was able to share this experience with you all. That bunny was so cute. I definitely will do some more research on this game. Hunt and track enemies through vast forests, swirling blizzards, and scorching deserts. Yeah, so it seems like a platformer, but then you also get to hunt. It's pretty cool. Climb a perilous frozen waterfall. Ah, uh, trying a little bit of Uncharted there, are we? out now exclusive to playstation 2 ah good to know it is exclusive <laughs> all right is this going to load me to the menu i don't know if there was much left on this demo just because some of it was uh repeats from the previous month's demo but we'll just see what it says ba -da -ba 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 -ba. all right so it was brave formula one we went through tekken and worms i guess we'll just check ys arc of napishtim Probably not going to play too much of this because the YS games are JRPGs, but we'll just load it up and have a look at how it looks. Just because I've never seen a YS game played before, and I'm sure a lot of you maybe haven't. And if you are a YS fan, uh, let me know. Uh, what do you like about the game? Konami. Okay, we'll check this and then we might move to the next demo, which is... Um... A few months ahead, but we've got some other cool games on here. Lias. I don't actually know if that's how you pronounce it. It could be Is. Like if it's Latin. The Ark of Napishtim. I just know that there's a few games of this in the series. Time Attack? Normal Hard or Nightmare? Oh, um, okay. At least I think it's a JRPG. Yeah, it's like turn-based, possibly? Let's see. Oh, I think I just used a move that I can't use. Oh, look at that jump. That's a very static jump. This feels like a... this feels like a PS1 game. 
you know, just advance the graphics a little bit, but this feels like a PS1 game. Didn't really give me any explanation on what to do. Because there is, um, there is a couple of YS games on the Vita, and I'm assuming the PSP as well, so these, these seem to be a popular series, I just not played one. I'm sorry, squirrel! I don't want to hurt the squirrel, but... I'm assuming I'm going to collect XP and stuff. I think they're squirrels, or what are they? They could be foxes, I could be hurting four foxes. Now I've got poison plants. I guess that builds me up to fight stronger enemies. And I'm poisoned or something? Hmm. Received. Cap your water. Alright. This just seems like the kind of game you would have played on a PS1 or maybe even maybe even an SNES console. Just brought to the 3D space. Huh. I wonder if all of the YS games are like this. Currently poisoned, but whatever. I'll just move around the map and just see what... See if it's gonna throw me into a battle. That's all good, Jonas. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed, uh, watching me play Brave. <laughs> Take care, bud. Oh yes, Sir Adolf. Have you seen Isha around? It seems she... They seem to block some paths off. I'm assuming that outside of the demo you can explore them, or... Maybe it's a storyline thing, I don't know. This thing healed me from the poison, so this is like your hub area, I guess. Isha came by here from the shore a little while ago. She looked like she was heading to the fountain to see Orha. Okay. I'm guessing Isha's a love interest? Or even just a best friend, I don't know. Well, this is where I went before and there were squirrels and foxes or whatever they were. I can't go this way. It only let me go up here and then I ran into that other guy. I think I leveled up. There's that poison plant that poisoned me before. Oh yeah, we didn't go down this way last time. Interesting, okay. We'll just check this next area and see what's up. And then we might move on to uh, the next demo disc. Oh, what is that? Seems like one of those games that would upscale really well with some nicer cables, but yeah. We're going for the true nostalgic experience this stream. Ow. Get sliced. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's game over. I added that one in, but yeah, thanks Konami. Interesting to finally try a YS game. Um, alright, so... Yeah, yeah, moving through the Dolby. Oh wait, we can just eject the disc, that's what we're gonna do. Go for the next title, which is... Third last disc. We got Demo Disc 46, November 2005. We've gone through quite a lot of them over this few days. Um, hope everybody's enjoying themselves. Okay. Up the next one. 
So on the next disc here we have Burnout Revenge, Conflict Global Storm, Crash Tag Team Racing, Everybody's Golf, Fahrenheit, SLAI, and Wild Water Adrenaline. Alright, so Burnout Revenge is probably in full development at this point. Like it's, um, I think it's basically released, so that should be fine. We don't really need to touch that one. I think I already played Conflict on a different demo, and we're probably expecting more of the same. So, Crash Tag Team Racing is probably the same deal as well, um, but we'll definitely try out uh, Fahrenheit, SL, SLAI, and Wild Water Adventure. I have tried SLAI once before. It's a it's a it's a mech game. It's um spy. Why is spy in its own category? Biggest news first. Oh okay. Buzz City Tom Clancy. Interesting. Monitor. The way this one's set up is different. Come down. American Wasteland. Replay. More of your games. Launch Downloader, GOTM64. I'm not actually sure what these are, I think these are programs. I might try them uh, at some point. I'm sure we hear for the demos. We might start with Everybody's Goal. Which the Everybody's Games are pretty fun. Um, I've actually played Everybody's Tennis and that was fun. And Everybody's Golf is also pretty fun. Um, I'm pretty sure it's known as Hot Shots Golf in America. It's the same team. But uh, here in PAL region we got, the, we got the same name as the Japanese. I'm not sure if this is the same game as Hot Shots Golf 4. Because if it is, uh, that game had... It had Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Dexter as playable characters. One player, yeah. Can do single play. Nine holes, eighteen. Oh, we're not gonna do eighteen holes though. We might just do the training mode, just something we can uh, test in a bite size, but we can't. Mini game? Can't play mini game. Making you do the tournament, seriously? Oh, the whole single player part is blocked. Multiplayer mode for one to four players. Okay. Stroke play. Play for the lowest stroke. Two player competition. Any game. You can play either a par three course or mini golf. Oh, okay. So there's mini golf on here. Can't do the mini game, so we'll do stroke play. Change number of players, it's just one. Mount Sakura, that's cute. Three hole winter. I can change the season. Let's go with autumn. Yes! Yep, easy mode. Left hand on your right knee. That's that's an interesting choice of wording. Um, three And yet here we are. Oh, this view is weird. Okay. Ooh, 232 yards. Okay, so how do I actually shoot? Okay, that's how I adjust my, uh, my pivot, I guess. There's too many buttons to change all the different, like, angles and stuff. But how do I actually, uh... That resets. This is actually a little bit confusing. Camera reset. Yeah, I actually don't know how to... It's 
three wood yet. This changes the club, but how do I actually, um... <laughs> I actually don't know how to hit the stroke. This is really confusing. Me rough, okay. I think I messed it up again. Balls, <laughs> Balls chat. So apparently I'm not very good at everybody's goal. I'm more used to my Neo-Turf Monsters, thank you. This is- this is tough. He keeps saying balls, it's just- it's hard to stay serious. <laughs> Alright. Surely that would've done it, yeah? Okay, I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> I moved like 87 yards. Oh. Five iron? Sure. Let's hit the five iron. Balls. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Bare ground, alright. Wait, that- that worked? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit confused how to actually play this. Balls! Alright, she's happy with that. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> okay. Balls. Swing. It's really confusing how to actually... I don't even know how many strokes this took me. Alright. Phew! <laughs> okay. I think the Everybody's Tennis is a more forgiving game and easier to pick up. Uh, the Everybody's Golf is a little bit confusing. And I have played golf games before, it's just... Hmm. Alright, we'll reset to the menu. <laughs> Very strange game. Yeah, we already tried these on an earlier demo, so we'll move on down to Fahrenheit, which I've actually never played, so... Demo time. Oh, the works of Atari. Alright. Uh, 
think it should be fine with this card. Yeah. I think we're looking pretty smooth. Alright. First person view, camera, character switching, mental state, run. Oh man, what am, what am I in for? What am I in for, chat? If someone's played Fahrenheit. Actions. Oh, yeah. A lot of reading. Unfortunately, some of these games just make the person do a lot of reading instead of exploring, and it's like... Yeah. Doesn't always work for some people. Everything looks peaceful oh, damn. Little East End restaurant. But in just oh my god, months, David Cage? The lives of two men will be completely transformed. John Winston, the man who is quietly eating at the table behind me, will soon get up and go to the men's room, where he will be the victim of a savage murder. Just another meaningless example of urban violence? Perhaps. Except that several other similar murders have already been committed. Different what? murders each time, with no links between them, but nevertheless, all of these murders followed exactly the same ritual. In a few minutes, you will become Lucas Kane. You will have to get inside the skin of an ordinary man who enters an uncontrollable trance and stabs a tall stranger to death in the restroom of the restaurant. One last thing. You will be deciding how the story works out. Your actions will determine the way the scenario unfolds, and each of your actions will have its own consequences. Try playing the scenes in different ways to see how your actions change the story. Good luck. From here on, Lucas Kane's life depends on you. Uh, okay. Alright. Oh, I can't skip. Oh, well. Uh, yep, we're playing a movie, are we? Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma, whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. Yeah, you can't skip anything. <laughs> oh. Is this another game part of MGS? Like... It all started right... Options? Oh, great. Right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard Destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, my life descended into chaos. I'm cool with playing video games that are like you know done cinematically like a movie it just it just catches me off guard considering uh this is a demo of of said game so i'm just wondering how much of playing is gonna occur how much how much is crammed into this demo you know because some some games will only give you just a mission a couple of things to do and some of them will give you maybe an entire level or i'm just not sure what to expect we do have a crow, though. 
That's a good start. That's a good start. Ugh. This is spooky. Bub. That bub has seen some stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a what a great vibe to, to this game. I have no idea what to expect, Phoenix. It's just. That's what we wanted to see at the moment. We're just witnessing a, a an unskip, unskippable cutscene. Okay. Oh no! Don't do it! Oh, this guy! This guy didn't do anything to you. There's literally nothing I can do. Oh dear. This his face looks so lifeless and his arms just gangling there, you know? Ugh. The control is also vibrating a lot. Just hiding it under the table so that you guys don't have to hear it through the mic. Oh, he snaps too and he's like, oh my gosh. What? Yeah, you just you just killed. What, what have I done? Neutral, depressed. Oh, that's a mood. Yeah. The crew's like, yeah, I've seen enough. I, I'm out. I didn't want. It was like a dream. Oh dear. Yeah. Now I see why the game mentioned mental state. Quick. I, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in. Oh my god, and that's it. That's just put me in the game now. I can finally do something. Lucas is depressed. Yeah, that's a mood. Alright, where do we pick him up? Wait. That's... <laughs> okay, okay. The demo just timed out. <laughs> The demo timed out because of the unskippable cutscenes. It's a, a game with a multi-part story and I got to play about 30 seconds of it. That's incredible. That's incredible. Oh, chat. Oh. Uh, I'm sure this game is- I'm sure this game is interesting. So far, I haven't really found a game that I that I hate, except maybe for Street Racing Syndicate, because I skipped it. I know that it's bad, but this is just time to be out. I'm not gonna go through that again. Um, I'm sure someone in, I'm sure someone on YouTube or Twitch will tell me that uh that it's a good game or whatever. Steel Lancer Area International. That game's not mentioned on the on the box. Oh, that must be the mech game. That must be what the S L A I stands for. Uh, we'll skip that game for the moment. We'll go to Wild Water Adrenaline first, because I have no idea what that is. And then we'll return to the mech game before moving on to the next disc. Wow. Fahrenheit. Kind of kind of wasted my time here on the stream, but you know what? Maybe it's a good game. I don't know. I just didn't really get to too much play. <laughs> widescreen games. But I'm not playing it in widescreen because I'm using a 4x3. But I, I get the pun. Indie Games Productions. Oh, Wild Border Adrenaline? Okay, so I'm actually just playing like... Oh, okay. It's a sports game. So I'm dealing with like, what, kayaking, water rafting, stuff like that? Okay. France kayaking. 
Oh, it's loading. I can't actually do anything. Okay, so it's like kayaking and stuff. Alright, down the... Oh, wow. It's twin stick. You gotta use... You gotta use the, uh... Oh, okay. Turn around. Yeah, each stick is a different arm. That's actually... That's actually kind of genius. Albeit I'm terrible at it. <laughs> no, I gotta remember. Okay. Yeah, turn right to go left. This is one of those games. Because you're using the force with, with your arms. <laughs> I'll get it, I'll get it. Okay, I'll, I'll get it. So we want to go full circle, then full circle, full circle. Oh, okay. I mean, credit to the credit to the athletes that do this. This is this is hurting my coordination right now. <laughs> I mean, whenever the Olympics come on, I, wa I watch the rowing and stuff. This game's trying to do. It's trying to get you in actually doing what a kayaker does. The music is very arcadey. I actually quite admire the music. It remind there is actually a kayaking game on the arcade. Um, I forget what it's called. It's by Namco. You actually like rotate a kayak mechanism thingy. I forget what it's called. A lot simpler to maneuver than this, but I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> okay. Wait, was that it? I, I don't know. Was that it? That was it! That, I, uh, that was it, Chet. <laughs> Maybe if I was better at controlling the kayak, I would have actually finished the, the run. But because I didn't know what I was doing, that's it. Okay, more eventful than, um... Yeah, more eventful than, than the other thing. Um, Alright, I might just show you guys uh, SLAI. It's a, it's a very bizarre mech game. Um, it was trying to do some interesting stuff, but... It was a little bit odd. At least, with, at least I know we'll get some gameplay out of it. <laughs> Yep, I'm glad that glad that Konami knew knew what questions to ask. Hey, it's Genki. It's Genki developed. Oh, I love me a Genki Genki game. That's right. It's one of the few Genki games that isn't a racing game. All right. Still, let's that that also explains why the name is so silly because you know it's Genki. It's a Japanese company. Steel Lancer Arena International. What a mouthful. Sure, let's go quick mode. From memory, this game had a pretty silly storyline, like you had these really silly characters. It wasn't like all serious, it was like kind of silly. Ready made. Proton. AI. Yeah. Alright, mission start. Sure, let's go beginner. Start mission with me? Yes. Battlefield, New York. Alright. Oh, I like that loading screen though, Genki. That's really pretty. I am mesmerized by the uh, little data modules. I've had two uneventful demos, so at least I know that this game will be will have some playable content. Um, yeah, Genki are known for making the uh, Metropolis Street Racer games as well as the uh, Tokyo Extreme Racer series and uh, stuff like that. So they're known to make some good racing games. 
This is the first time I've heard of them making a, uh, a mech game. To worry about licensed music. I'm not sure if that's licensed, but I'm not going to risk it. So we might just end it there with that with that demo, and we'll try um try the next demo disc. We've got two more to go through. And I will not rest because yesterday's stream I managed to do five hours worth of content, and we're not at that point yet. So I know that we'll get through them. All right. In the meantime, chat, um, feel free to use any of the features available to you. Okay. Put up the next one. For anybody watching this on YouTube, uh, I definitely recommend you come and join in on the Twitch channel as we stream all sorts of stuff, uh, varying from various retro games and arcade stuff, and my art. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. And yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy, and yeah, come hang out with us on Twitch where you can watch this stuff live and enjoy the many bot commands. Alright, now with that all said and done, uh, what's on this demo disc? We have... Uh, King Kong, Retro Gladiator, The Sims 2, Shrek Super Slam, Sly, Sly 3, uh, Sly 3, got, got tongue tied there, FIFA 06, Evil Dead Regeneration, Spartan Total Warrior, Asterix and Obelisk, uh, Dancing Stage Max, Genji, LA Rush, and Spy Toy. Alright, so first things first, oh, okay, they label differently here, so we might try Asterix. We'll skip Dancing Stage because it's a DDR game and it's going to have licensed music. We'll skip FIFA because I've already tried to play some FIFA games from memory. LA Rush, actually the demo for this is really awful so I'll we'll skip that. Um, King Kong, we played it on stream already. We'll try it, there's going to be some There's going to be some great content on Ratchet Gladiator to show. We'll try a Shrek Super Slam because it's a pretty funny um, Shrek fighting game. And we might skip Spy Toy, because there's going to be not much to report on that. Sims 2 is actually, the demo for this is very, um, very framey. It doesn't run very well. I know that I have tried it in my own time. So, yeah, we've only got to omit a couple games, but it should be fine. I don't know much about the Asterix and Obelisk IP, but I'm just interested to see what it looks like as a game in terms of, uh, like what it looks like when you load it up. We probably won't play too much of it, but I'm just interested to see what it looks like because it seems like such an old IP to have a game on the PS2. But it could prove me wrong. It could be interesting. Yeah, the Ratchet Gladiator demo is really is really cool. Um, it has modified. It has like early versions of the levels where the levels were a little bit different, and it has it has cut music and it has like 
slightly different colored enemies and stuff, it's it's actually different to play. XXL2. I have no idea what to expect with this. Inverted control with the menu, that's great. Alright, I have no idea what to expect with this. It's a spinning coin, but it's also a disc. That's kind of confusing me, this loading screen. What? Get up it? A traitor? Who are you to talk about our druid like that? My name is Sam Shipper Gaul, and I should know a traitor when I see one. I'm a traitor myself. Traitor to Rome. I'll not betray treachery through treason as reason of Caesar. Pretty, but I didn't understand a word of what you said, Asterix. So you'll have the gall to come to our village to slander our druid without. Those are those are some really nice cutscenes, considering Asterix and Obelisk. Uh, it's a book series, right? I guess it had a cartoon series as well, but. I don't really know what to expect for the gameplay. Oh, that's Paris. Oh, and there's a timer up here that I have seven minutes to do stuff. I... yep. I guess it's a bit of a uh, beat em up boar kind of game, if it looks a bit. I imagine this game might have co-op as well. It would be interesting. That weapon- that this- this water gun weapon, is this not just Mario Sunshine? Can someone clarify, is that not Super Mario Sunshine's like water gun thing? <laughs> this is so funny! I am fighting like, you know, Mario's little cannon that he has in Isle of Delfino. It's so funny. Also, I think a little puppy dog is following me. There's a little model of a puppy dog. Yeah, it's a puppy. Okay, circle and square do my various attacks. Oh, triangle does something as well, but... That's so funny, this is just the exact, like, water gun weapon. You can't tell me it's not. <laughs> Oh, I think I charged myself up for fire ability. That's interesting. I'm sure the cutscene would have given me some more context. Oh, I can bet. Oh, does that mean this game would get an R rating nowadays? I guess if you bet, you'll get a power up or something? I don't know too much about the IP. I know it was a comedic IP, but it was a little bit past my time. Blood, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Nah, you got it. It looks like it. Plus look like the flood. Oh my god. Boing. I have a feeling that this is gonna fit with the source material of of the uh, of the the comic slash book slash cartoon series pretty well. I have to admit, like the slapstick humor and everything feels pretty good. The only the only issue with this game is kind of having you know no context to what I'm doing and you know just naturally having no very little knowledge about about the IP. But um, I don't know if I was a kid into this series. I can see myself playing this game. It's interesting. I think the animations are nice and fluid. They seem to suit the characters pretty well. The game's very colourful. It looks really nice. This is just my analysis. I'm just really just... I'm just a little bit lost for the uh, source material because maybe there is a water gun weapon in, in the source material. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe they did it first and Mario did it second. I don't know. I'm just calling what I see. <laughs> Boing. I think I'm collecting pie symbols? What am I collecting? Or oh, helmets? Yeah. Oh, I guess it's just how many enemies I can beat up in this time frame, perhaps.
I don't know if I can actually switch characters. Oh yes I can, never mind. Now I'm Obelix, I'm big and beefy. Oh, okay, that's how I switch. There we go, I've got trapped a little bit of gameplay. Aya. That rewarded me. I don't know what it does, but it rewarded me. Boing boing. Just get defeated. <laughs> Both. I got defeated and the demo ended. All right. Interesting. All right. Uh, if anyone, if anybody was into the the series or played the game, uh, I'd be interested to know more about it because uh, this looks like it would be fun. But you know, it would it would help to have more knowledge of uh, of the of the franchise. Okay. Yep, we'll skip dancing stage. Uh, might try Evil Dead. I am curious as to what Genji is. We gotta find out what Genji is. This takes 10 to 20 seconds to load while displaying a gra black screen. Ah, oh, thank you for letting me know. Game Republic, don't haven't heard of that company. I think I have heard of the Genji game, but I know nothing about it, so I'm curious to see <laughs> what actually is it. Because uh it's clearly not Overwatch. This is way before Overwatch. <laughs> Alright. Is this gonna be like a Dynasty Warriors clone or what are we in for? Honestly, Asterix and Obelix kind of was. L1 Kamu? Screen status, guard lock, and more special action. Jump. Huh. Items and equipment. Yeah, you're telling me all this stuff that I'm probably not even get to, gonna get to try. Welcome, this is the boundless plane that exists within me. You will face many challenges in the coming battles. You will have little hope of success unless you master the power of the Amahagane. Power. The power of Kamui. Release the power stored within your Amahagane and you may anticipate many enemy attacks, allowing you to time a counterattack. Now, use Kamui to defeat the enemies that stand before you. Okay. Yoshitsune is the character's name. Interesting. Okay. Now try activating. Yeah, okay. This is very, uh... There is also a fan series called Legend of Genji? I did not know that, Phoenix. <laughs> If you anticipate and defeat all enemies, you shall be awarded with divine protection. Do not despair, trust your abilities, and you are sure to succeed soon enough. When you encounter powerful enemies, or find yourself surrounded, use Kamui to overcome your predicament. Yet you may not use this at will, you must first store up su sufficient power in your Amahagane by, lighting, by fighting enemies. You must use Kamui with prudence. Now go forth and use Kamui to complete your mission. Sure. I was gonna comment about how nice those water effects were. They were really pretty. 
I'm going to probably butcher the pronunciation. Uh, the Hyankyo? Hi Hyankyo? Like Hainan? Like Hyankyo, maybe? The Tama Yumbito Monastery. Ta Tama Ta Tama Yoribito. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I knew I'd butcher something. <laughs> Sorry. They use the same audio cue in Tokyo Jungle. I don't know if anybody in chat has played that, but I, I hear this occasionally in in the game in that game as well. The same audio cue. It's just really uh just just fascinating. Yeah, it seems that this is going to be kind of uh, Dynasty Warriors or I think Oni Musha is like this as well. Did we already go through this? We really went through this. I'm pretty sure we, we already went through this. I'm pretty sure we went through all this. What, what happened? Did it just boot loop me? Or maybe I didn't read something? Okay. I must have, must have not read that properly. Okay. Because that looked like the only thing I could select. Mount Kurama? Miyoyogi Temple. Defeat the Mononoke. Okay. Defeat the evil spirit that lives within the temple. Control either Yoshitsune or... Benki and defeat the demon that awaits in the temple. Alright. I'm probably going to save that Kamoi stuff supposed bosses nearby. Oh -ho. Oh, it's giving me ratings, similar to like Devil May Cry, I guess. Genji may die, I think should be an alternate name for the game. Amahagane crystals. Collect three to release this power. Use collected crystals to boost life, attack, or defense. Alright. This looks like the next door, right? Yeah. This door is shut tight, I can't open it. Ah, yes. Classic video games. Guy. Maybe I do need Kamui against him. Alright. Use the amber beads to break the seal of the door. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> It does look very young, Genji. Oh, here's the here's the uh, the scary Mononoke monster. Oh, dang. This would be the second demo today that allowed me to fight a boss battle within the demo. 
Why can't I use Kung Lee on it? Yeah, why don't we use that Kung Lee stuff? I guess I need to be further away. Oh wow, well, that was kind of a waste. It wouldn't let me move whilst I was in it. jumps away when I do that. It's annoying. What a spooky monster. I don't like that he has sickles sickles on its arms. Ow. Gosh, even, he's even got blades, like, on his back legs near his butt. Ouch. Wait, did he heal? Or is that two sets of health bars? Is he like, is he like some Kingdom Hearts bosses? Yeah, he's a Kingdom Hearts boss. Look at him. Two sets of health. He sounds a bit like Link with all this grunting. Yeah, doesn't he? Well, I did die, so I think that's, I think that's game over for me. The end. <laughs> I tell the tale of Genji. He lasted about three minutes tops. <laughs> can I, uh, can I say, can I boot back to end game? Here we go. <laughs> A lot of grunting, yeah. Okay, yeah, we said we'd skip FIFA, Dancing Stage, LA Rush, probably King Kong. Let's try something a bit more up my alley. Let's let's do some Ratchet Gladiator. I think you guys will get a treat out of this one, playing Ratchet Gladiator. See, I don't know if I'll stream this one anytime soon, just because the game is still fresh on my memory, but... Um, it's a very fun game, and honestly, I think I'd enjoy... Uh, doing a co-op playthrough the next time I play it, because the last couple times I've done a single player, so... Okay, custom splash screen for the game as well, that's one- that's the first thing I can note. Um, different- different text, uh, the front cover shows you with Clank, but you don't actually play Clank. I love that the demo lets you use- do cooperative play, that's really cool. They actually let you choose that. What's in the multiplayer mode, though? Like, oh, it's like King of the Hill mode. I actually haven't seen this. Oh, yep. Yeah, this is the this is the this is the online multiplayer loading screen. Um, I will just uh, it's just reminding me of of what DNA Workshop does with the Ratchet Gladiator servers. They are up if you want to play them. Oh wow, yeah. You you flat out can just uh do a multiplayer mode. Pretty sure that's how you spell it. Yeah, there we go. He, he does stuff related to Gladiator, if anybody in chat wants to see. So this is how you would actually um do multiplayer if I had access to it, which I don't, because you need an extra player. Um, but it's interesting that they included that on a demo, that you could try the multiplayer mode. That it's it said that on Ratchet and Clank 3 as well, but it's just like, they didn't have to do that. I just think that's really cool. Alright, we'll actually try the, um, the single player now, though. I like that that's... that these are included. Tonight's main event! <laughs> it's also pretty small text, but I'm pretty sure that's because it's all placeholder stuff. They do improve on that. Um... I will recommend not to play the PS3 version of this game, though. The P it's the PS2 version, or not at all, really. The PS3 version is so buggy. It has its problems. Um, 
Even even this demo probably Tonight, is better off. Tonight on a very off. special episode of Dread Zone, intergalactic heroes Ooh. Ratchet and Clank are reunited once again. But will this famous duo have what it takes to survive the dangers that await them in the deadly Meteor Temple of Shar? Yep. Okay. So the missions are on Planet Shar. Oh, so you got the you got you got the robots. Um, they've got a custom helmet. They're not. That's not their stock helmet. Yeah, stick to the straight stuff, babe. Leave the comedy to me. I love Daniel Dallas and wanted his. I love Dallas and wanted his interactions. I'm not sure if these are custom voice lines for the demo or if they're just ones that play on the first visit. They they sound fresh to me. They don't sound like the ones I hear in the main game. So do enjoy the commentary because I don't think you hear these in in the actual final game. I think they they really work some of them. Yeah, so the first thing to note is the UI is completely different. Uh, both the top HUD and bottom HUD is different, it's designed differently. That dropship is yellow. In the final game, it's a dark red. It's really weird to see it yellow for some reason. It doesn't really fit with the whole Dread Zone aesthetic. Alright, we'll get one of them to hack orbs for me, and then I'll be fine. Let's switch to the Magnet Cannon. Ah, oh, so the um every time he completes an orb hack, it's actually playing a sound effect from Ratchet and Clank 2. So they've reused the sound effect as a placeholder in the demo, but they changed it in the final game. So I'm just kind of pointing things as I see them because uh this demo is totally different to the final product in many ways. Yep, this uh this menu is a little bit different. It's mostly consistent, but yeah, it looks like yeah, it is. It is a little bit different. Okay, and then this just triggers the next mission usually in the story. Skill point acquired. Different UI, and this is also um, a cut track from the game. That, this 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 music is cut from the game. They choose the a different victory theme in the final. Separated by impenetrable force fields. To advance, Team Darkstar will have to cut the power to the force fields. So in the in the final game, uh, those cutscenes were removed and they were just replaced with uh, they were just replaced with just a voice line by Dallas. They actually removed that cutscene. Or well, they they. They play a similar thing, but yeah, it's different. I can apparently afford the B6 obliterator. Can I? It's not grayed out. Oh, just let me buy it without without a confirmation. Normally, it lets you say, "Do you want to purchase?" But it actually just let me buy it without question. So now we have the containment suite music, which is played in the hub world. It's like a relaxation music. It's playing on this planet, which kind of doesn't make any sense. So, my my guess is is that David, the composer, had hadn't finished making the music at the time. That's my theory. Because this music just does not fit the mission at all. See, it's yellow. It makes no sense. Yeah, the, the entire UI is different. Like, I can't. I can't. Stop mentioning it. Alright, these these turrets feel like they're a little bit weaker than the final game. They normally bit more challenging since I replayed it recently. Get the robot to spin the crank. Since I don't know if they're gonna summon some more enemies or not. 
on the toe. Oh, yep. They did. Feels like um That's true you can, I'm just not gonna do it because this vehicle looks too slow. Um so my theory is is that the difficulty for this is either different for the sake of the demo, or maybe it's on the uh, couch potato mode, which is the lowest difficulty option uh, when you first play the game. And I guess nowadays I've played it enough times where I just play it on the contestant mode. Um, or the Sturbinator. So I'm not sure if it's running on a specific difficulty or if it's just being customized for the demo. If maybe they tweak the enemies later or something, I'm not sure. See, the vehicle in the final game could also absorb the health crates it smashes open, but in this case it's not doing that. So that's that's an addition. It's not it's not an option here in, in this demo, so they must have added that later. Oh dear, that dropship is that dropship is firing at me. area. Okay, there's some more nodes to do here. I guess uh, left or right, we'll go right. I suppose I usually go left, so let's do something different. Um, oh dear. Gotta watch out for those lasers. Everything else feels a little bit weaker, but those lasers are always annoying no matter what to continue playing on. Alright. I think I'll turn it. Oh, okay. I think, uh, I think the structure of this mission is different in the final game because I'm pretty sure that you don't take the Landstalker into this area. The mission just ends when you enter through that gate. Well, not through the gate, but you do, um, I'm pretty sure you do, like, just one or two nodes and then it moves to another mission. So I'm pretty sure some of these audio cues were changed, I think. I just think that this mission was structured a little bit differently in the final. Either to, to make it like flow better, so that you're not spending too long. I do like this UI, but at the same time, uh, the final one that they went with was way more legible. I should probably uh, let the... I think the next time I get a victory, we'll, uh, we'll let the music play. The concealed beneath these priceless stone carvings. Here at Dreadzone, we're serious about historical preservation. Future generations will look back at recordings of Dreadzone to see these historic sites blown up in high-definition video. <laughs> oh yeah, that that the um the vendor is a little bit clunky. It uh it kind of like freezes for a second. It's a little bit daunting. I guess we'll just buy a freeze mod. Having the arbiter would be cool, but I don't think we'll actually be able to buy it in this demo. I don't think we'll have enough 
fine. Oh, I have the fusion rifle. That's amazing. We'll just use that. Fusion rifle is incredible. Even just no scoping with it is so good. Since I can't afford the Arbiter, we'll, we'll be doing just great with this. Okay, EMP that thing. I want it to stop shooting me. There we go. Oh no, there's no ammo! Okay. Yeah, it seems like some of the sound effects I'm hearing are from, from Russian playing 2. Seems like they've just used a few sound effects as a placeholder. Hearing those sounds loop, I, I, I'm, I'm glad they changed them in the final game. <laughs> they do loop a bit weirdly. If I have the charge boots. Oh, I do. Okay. Hello there. Welcome to the stream. Playing some demo discs today, and I am up to an an earlier build of uh, Ratchet Gladiator. So it looks very different to the final product. And it plays a little bit differently too. So I've played a variety of different demos today, and I've got two more demo discs to do. time I'm recording this it is 12 a.m. but uh it's well worth it in my opinion because we'll be uploading this to YouTube and I know that people on YouTube watching this right now will be enjoying themselves and I'm happy to read any comments below on your experiences with these games do you have nostalgia all that kind of stuff Defeating enemies automatically upgrade your dreadzog weaponry and improve your maximum nanotech level oh yeah grind cable yep take me across Yeah, normally I'm like that too, but um, I got through half of the demo discs in part one, which was yesterday, and I wanted to get the remainder of them done in a second part and not have to do a third one. So we're here making sure we can go through all of them in one sitting. <laughs> Ratchet's so odd looking in this game, yeah. You know, the no, no tail because the tail is shoved in the suit. Um, I think it might- I think the camera might be slightly different because it makes it- you know, he also kind of, uh, the way he stands, he stands is different to the other games, so he looks shorter than he actually is. Like, Ratchet's already a short guy, but, um, the way he kind of stands to be all, like, edgy is, um, it makes him look even shorter, because there's a little bit of- I guess there's a little bit of slouching going on, which can relate. It, uh, it does make you look shorter. <laughs> Um. Oh yeah, here we go. We've had a weapon upgrade and the weapon upgrade screen is a bit different. It has a black background instead of having the normal anim animations it has. So you can tell that you can tell that they added more after this demo to kind of update things. Also, I'm getting jackpots every now and again, and I don't think they're jackpot crates. I think it's the jackpot that you get from New Game Plus. I think they're just letting me have it um, as like a reward, as like a staying alive thing that they'll give you that. But I think they remove that because it's always been a staple for it to be New Game Plus only. Okay. 
Oh, we might take the jumpy pad again. It's neat that they, they put that there so you don't have to walk all the way up to the grind table again in case you miss the jump or something. They definitely make this game more user friendly than some in the sense that you won't just be losing time moving around the moving around the map. And they also had multiplayer in mind, like the way they designed the maps, you know that when they include it in multiplayer, it also translates really well. Because you don't want to be wasting your time walking around, so it's really cool how they designed it. Oh no, one of my robots are down. I guess we'll head down here. Yeah, fair enough, XD face. Honestly, I would, you know, prefer to go to bed on time, but I can make an exception for this video because uh, my viewers are awesome. And it's not like I do this every night. But I, I've had this a long time coming, so it was a request through Twitch. Uh, people are watching on Twitch to get to get um, a retrospective of demo discs done, and I decided I wanted to record it as well. All right. So where's the other node? Hang on, we can bring up the map. Oh wow, this map is so different. It's actually harder to read. I've got this um. Yeah, I think this map is a lot harder to read. They definitely went with one that was a little bit clearer. It's still it's still the same aesthetic with the low opacity thing, but it has this green tint and just a random dot. It's really hard to read. Like that faint green arrow is meant to be you. I'm glad they uh they they tidied it up. Like it's possible, but I think they illustrate it better. Oh, there's just an enemy up there. And shoot him. <laughs> hey, that's what you get for being up here. He was gonna fly down and hurt us anyway. That's what they do. Oh, the, the nodes are on the right here. Okay. So I must have missed them. Yeah, they threw the uh threw the pillar temple pillars here. Do I have enough rifle back? I have my rifle? My rifle's still empty. Damn. Oh, I'm dead. Uh... That does put me here, though. Maybe I can change missions so that we don't. Oh, okay. Look at this though, chat. They actually give you a fair amount of missions. It looks like they give you most of the Shah map. So, as the wrench turns, assault and frozen a tundra, shoot to kill robots in a barrel. Okay, so um, from memory, assault and frozen tundra was yeah. You you um, it was a mission where all your weapons get scattered around and you have to recollect them, um, and use whatever's available to you. Shoot to kill was like a landstalker mission. Let's see, a ratchet must destroy targets. Yeah, yeah, you use targets. Um, robots in a barrel was like, you know, you fight waves. Um, yeah, so these missions are in the final game, but they're probably tweaked slightly. So I think the mission we're doing now was changed um, because the pacing is a little bit different here. I think they kind of improve it in the final game, but it's really cool to be able to go back and play this version. Uh, since we're here at this menu, another thing I can point out is these medals are completely different in design. Um, they do end up updating them to look more like medals. I don't, they look like little, I don't know, they look like little matchbox cars, like those gummy cars you buy and eat. They look like that. Um, I can probably play this for ages, but I'm not going to do that because it seems... Uh, we're, we're here for multiple demos. This UI is so different in the final... They do, they do um, clean it up a little bit more. So yeah, I hope that wasn't too boring. I hope it was an interesting look into how, how different this game looked. 
And I know that if I get a hold of even earlier builds of the Ratchet and Clank games, I'll definitely cover them. But these are just these are what I have thus far. I've managed to go through Ratchet and Clank 1, 2, 3, and 4. I've managed to have betas of all of them, which I'm very proud of. I'm very happy to, to have that. Okay, we can't reset from here, can we? I don't think so. I think we're going to have to reboot the disc. Yeah, it does look pretty pretty different. Um, I'm quite happy to have gotten a hold of these uh, these early builds and stuff. And if I get any earlier ones, I'll definitely dive into them and maybe do some kind of a analysis on them. Because um, I'm really interested in that. There's already a few videos online of people kind of looking into some of the cut content, which is interesting. But um, yeah, I'd like to have my own look and be able to play it for myself. So I hope people have been enjoying thus far. Um, we've got a few more games to go on this disc, and then I'll have one more after that, which is a demo from 2006. So yeah. There were more demos even in the 2010s we had demos, but I think around about that time for PS2 is when it started to fizzle out. So we started getting more PS3 stuff, and I do have PS3 demos, but they're not really worth showcasing. They're probably more just to say that I have some. Alright, so... Uh, we were gonna... So we had Ratchet Gladiator. We're gonna go do uh, Shrek Super Slam. <laughs> Let's get ready for Shrek Super Slam. Our attack. <laughs> All right. I have never played this, but I have heard of this of the reputation of this game online and how it apparently has a cult following of players now. Melee, join your friends in a time match. Okay. Who have we got unlocked? We've got Shrek, Donkey, Puss in Boots, or Prince Charming. Shrek games are always fun, aren't they just? Yeah. There's actually a few, I mean, I've played Shrek Smash and Crash Racing on stream. That was a fun game to stream. Um, I wouldn't mind playing Shrek 2, that's actually a decent co-op game. It's actually pretty fun. Um, but yeah. I guess I want to go Donkey, I like Donkey. Start join? Alright. Oh, I can just I can just add all of them as a FFA. Oh god, double Shrek! Oh no! Oh god, we have Ditto Shreks, Shrek Dittos. Poison Apple in. Oh, we're gonna fight in the end. All right. Power attack, block breaker, multi hit. I'm a little confused how that works, so... Square, triangle, triangle... Square, square, square... Yeah, Shrek 2 is great. I would play that. Like, I have played it before. I have played it before. It's been a fun time. I think I played it with you, actually, Phoenix. It's a good time. But yeah, this is basically your free-for-all brawling game, and I guess it gets compared to Smash Bros a lot, even though it plays more like a Power Stone game, honestly. Um, and Power Stone's, you know, Power Stone probably did the whole brawling formula first before Smash, it being an arcade game from the Naomi and Dreamcast era, which is like early 2000s. Yeah, I think, I think literally the first Power Stone was the year 2000. Uh, I, I could be wrong, but... Oh, I collected something that just like boosted me? I guess it's a power-up? I mean, there's so many other brawling games out there nowadays. There's a uh, Digimon Rumble Arena. There's um, uh, I mean, there's that Nickelodeon game now. There's uh, there's a really old there's a really old Nicktoons fighting game on the GameCube. There's uh, Dreamix TV. There's some strange games out there. How do I have this ability still? That seems so OP. Like, I had that for a while. Oh, I think they're potions or something. That would make sense. To, to Shrek 2. Oh yeah, there's... 
Is there a grab or something? How do I grab? This just oh okay. I think L1's the grab. Can I can I pick up Shrek? Can I pick up this this big guy? No, he picked me up though. Oh my god, if I had this game though, I think I would spend an afternoon trying to figure this out with some friends. I guess I keep picking up the potions to boost my attacks because you know, I'm donkey, I'm cool. Oh, what am I doing? Look at me, hop, hop, hop. Hop on my front legs, what is going on? What is going on? This is great! I... I didn't mean to slick Shrek dittos, but it's kind of funny to see... Shreks. So many Shreks. Yeah, Phoenix, I think you'd really enjoy Shrek Smash and Crash Racing. It's a, uh, it's a really fun karting game with the Shrek characters. It actually, uh, follows the source material really well. And I, I played it on stream and I actually, I actually made it on the speedrun leaderboard for it. It was really fun to play. Yeah, yeah, there was, um, there, there was a, uh, so there was a really old Nicktoons one that was really bad, but then they also made a new Nickelodeon one, which is good, and then I think, I think Cartoon Network is in the works of making a new one now. Probably because they saw that Nickelodeon succeeded and they're like, oh, we're gonna try this again, even though it didn't work for us the first time. <laughs> I have also played Dream Mix TV World Fighters and there is a uh, Barbie type character in that game. It's like the Japanese, it's like a Japanese brand of doll that's similar to Barbie that you play as. Oh, Shrek did a mega fart. How do I, how do I deal with that? I love that our names are- wait, Slam 3, does this mean that we've reached like a certain- Ah, oh, this must play similar to PlayStation All-Stars then. So that's either like your- that's either like your slamming level, or maybe it's like your stocks. I'm not too sure how, how this works yet. I'm just kinda like, just kicking and bashing Shrek, cause I can. I'm drinking all the potions. Look at, look at what I'm doing! What am I doing? Look at this! <laughs> I had Shrek in some weird kind of a... Uh... Or maybe that's my slam ability? It doesn't look... This is just so weird! I... This is wild. Oh no, I got yeeted out the window with that super fart again. Oh yeah, there's a block. We got a, we got a block. Just like smash. We can even we can even we can even roll with it. You know we can we can we can dash. You know just like smash. That's actually funny. You can actually like roll out of the out of the shield. That's <laughs> oh, it's just like smash in some aspects and in some aspects not. In some aspects, it's more like PlayStation All Stars. That's so weird. I'm still trying to figure this game out. It's also weird giving me like a whole five minutes to beat people up. Instead of stocks. Um... Oh, okay. Pinball, pinball! Everyone get knocked. <laughs> okay. Shrek's up to slam seven. I'm probably gonna come like second. Oh, I appreciate that XD. I try to do some variety, and I really like my retro stuff. I haven't really been in an uh, in an artist mood lately, so I'm glad that I can do the other stuff I love in the meantime. Shwish swash! Oh, <laughs> I can't shrink. This is so funny. I'm so glad I can share this experience with you all. I have never played this game in my life. And I think this is a great way to start. A fact I learned from watching Did You Know Gaming is apparently on the apparently uh, hidden in the game files of the PSP version of the game was a copy of a Tony Hawk game. It was just as a dummy file to, to fill up the space of the of the cartridge apparently. 
And I think because it was the same team that made that specific Tony Hawk game, they just dumped it on there as a dummy file. I mean, sure, XD, if you want to. <laughs> oh my god, the fact that this is still going. I couldn't actually choose any game settings because it's a demo and they lock you with that. But I'm still... <laughs> I don't know how I'm still surviving this. Maybe I should play a Shrek next time. Both of them are doing really well for slams. Oh god, <laughs> that mega fart are doing. <laughs> so silly. Yep. Time's up. All right. Shrek one. Slams four. I ended up coming second last. He got twelve slams. I. <laughs> uh. This is a strange game. Available holiday 2005 in the glory of Comic Sans MS. <laughs> That's so funny. They made a Shrek game and wrote it in Comic Sans. Look, Comic Sans isn't evil, it's just that, you know, from, from my art degree, I know for a fact that Comic Sans is just frowned upon. <laughs> Alright, so, after Shrek Super Slam, we've got Sly 3, Spartan, Total Warrior, and I'll probably skip the last two because Sims 2, just, the demo doesn't run very well on here. It's very framey, and Spy Toy, I don't think it's an actual game, it's just more like a tech demo thing. It might not be that fun to watch. Let's try Sly 3, I hope this isn't going to be a spoiler for me because I've only played the first two games, I haven't played the third one yet. I was playing them chronologically. Um, but the Sly Cooper games are very fun. Good old Sucker Punch. Oh, okay. Lemonade Brawl. Fly the biplane. The Shaman Escapes. Or well, you got a two-player mode, Sly and Carmelita. Ooh. I reckon I want to fly a plane. Let's try that out. This is structured differently to the Slide 2 demo, which actually gave you a lot of content. So I'm a little bit worried if this is going to be too long of a demo, but... As Sly, fly your biplane and destroy 30 enemies without being shot down. Use R1 to shoot, X and circle for speed, and... or X and square for speed, and circle to barrel roll. Oh, okay. Look at me, do barrel rolls, I'm like Star Fox. Okay, now, the winner here is the last man standing. Lead your opponent and watch for six. I know how you hate being burned alive at 500 feet. Oh, it's getting hot. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, I have to pick up boards. Okay. Yeah, I see them now. I actually use them all. I'm too used to video games giving me unlimited ammo in in an aeroplane vehicle. It's very 
hard to aim. This is probably just gonna be time consuming purely for that reason. Oh, I missed it. That's alright. I've still got a bit of ammo for now. It's so hard to aim! There's a level in Crash Bandicoot similar to this, and I found that easier to aim, and that was an older game. But of course I didn't have to worry about running out of ammunition in that, so maybe I just need to get good. I definitely need to, uh... All good, XD. Hope you enjoyed yourself. At this rate, I could probably just wait them out and just uh, let them all blow up, but I'm pretty sure they want me to do the do the blowing up. It's so hard to aim. Other jobs? We might go other jobs. I just don't want to don't want to dwell on the same mission, but um, I certainly would love to actually get around to finishing Band of Thieves and playing this because it it would be fun. I'd love to actually finish all the games. Help Sly and the gang win the lemonade drinking contest, but watch out for those double crossing Ready, dingoes. Steady, go! Be one with the drink! You are the lemonade! Oh, drink! 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 Steady drink! On. Drink! Wait, I'm allergic to lemons! Drink it down! That can't be pleasurable! <laughs> Guzzle, guzzle, guzzle. Oh, I am guzzling. Glug, glug, glug. Don't slow down. Some host boss. Suck it down. Waterfall. Oh my gosh. Glug, glug, glug. Chug, chug, chug. Come on, faster, faster. Bravo. We win. <laughs> <laughs> Spill more than he drank. Around here, there's only one thing we do with cheaters. Turn on the fence, Bruce. It's time we gave these cheaters a beating. Oh, wow, mate. I didn't realize we were in Australia. I feel right at home, mate. All you Aussies in the chat, get ready for a ball. Gotta deal with these pesky dingoes. And these roos. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, jeez. The fact that they have me playing as Bentley, though. I did not see that coming. Ouch! Ouch! Are you okay? Oh, we're gonna do some character switching. Right kind of dynamic. It's alright, I know how to play Sly much more so when it comes to the combat. Oh, I don't have that charge cane here. Okay. Oh, I have the other, the other one? Okay. These are some pesky rules, I tell you, mate. <laughs> okay. I just did not expect more than one Australian game to, to appear. Um, 
after playing Tide the Tasmanian Tiger yesterday. They just keep coming. Uh. You holding up, Murray? We have time to play Murray. The thunder flop. Nice work, big guy. Okay. Yeah, I know I can just thunder flop them. Pretty strong. Give it to him, pal. Yeah, they're too big for me to do the pickup move, so I'm just gonna thunder flop them. I love the cel shaded art style of this game. It's very like 3D comic book. And I, I, it just feels timeless. It just feels like you can't you can't go wrong with this game. Excellent hit, Marty. They even do the whole comic book onomatopoeia when you when you beat up enemies. Cow, twack, smack. Looking good, Murray. There's so many of them. There we are. Yes! <laughs> the Cooper Gang rules the roost. We're the kings of the hill. The totally maxed out heavyweight champions. Those guys won't be coming back here anytime soon. Um, guys, looks like they saved the big guy for last. He's wearing that freaky bad spirit mask. He must be so jacked. We should work oh, yeah. together to take this guy down. That mask has a powerful force in it. Dang. Yeah, definitely Phoenix. The first game, the first game, um, is a little bit kind of like rough around the edges, but the art style, but that's like they made they made them look a little bit, you know, they've got like a bit of a kiddyish face facial expression. Um, the second and third game improved on the animation a lot, but I think I think all of the games are great. I died. Let Benley and R R Murray stun him before attacking. Oh, I should actually read what I'm meant to do. He's throwing like a stun bomb. Lead him over by Bob and I'll pull the trigger. Yep, 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 you do that, Benley. Bang. Probably gonna be one of those hit three times sorts of situations. Or more, because look at that health bar. But yeah, this game's been HD remastered and it plays plays fine, and it looks great too. Come on, bud. Get him while he's dazed. Oh, how many times am I gonna have to do this? Look at that HP. Do that. Do that, Murray. Man, I'm taking hits. Ow. That's what I thought to do. I thought to run him into... This game is mainly uh mainly stealth, mainly stealth platforming, but you do get fight a lot. You do get a you do get fight sections and vehicle sections thrown in. Um... <laughs> I have to start again, don't I? Yep. All right, if I die one more time, though, I'm just gonna exit the demo. 
just don't want to dwell too much. Bang. three times. So it's probably going to take six times, I reckon. Maybe five? Five or six times? Alright, that's actually not too bad. Run into the bomb. Come on. Oh, I got hit too. Ow, seriously? Oh, that's just... That's mean. <laughs> Alright, what was the other job? Lemonade brawl, biplane, shaman. Actually, I don't want to play too many of these because it's probably a spoiler for me. Um... Possess unsuspecting guards or run drills. Okay. I guess this whole area is based on Australia. Although I've never heard of a koala shaman. Guru of the stone. Burry has purified Ayers Rock, and now I humbly <laughs> deliver your walking stick and moonstone. The time for escape has come. <laughs> Thank you, you're too kind. But tell me, how do you plan to escape? <laughs> Yeah, Zooks, you can transform yourself. Why, once you change shape, a guard is sure to come inside and investigate. Hey, da 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 I baba wanna. Too true. Wait, here comes a guard. Oh my gosh. Master, hold down the L1 button to transform. I love it when you do it. What? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Master, you're the greatest! That jump's totally full! Once his back is turned, use your powers to take over his mind. Oh, this is some bizarre stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just for the sake of spoilers, I'm gonna stop right there with the Sly Cooper stuff, but... This is, this is cute. I'm feeling pretty nostalgic from playing the Slidechi demo over and over again as a kid. Um, and then when I finally got a hold of the game on the PS Vita, no doubt, um, I managed to enjoy more of it. I still need to beat it though. Alright. Uh, Shrek. Oh, we still got Spartan Total Warrior on this disc before we move on to the last one. Oof at them calling it Ayers Rock instead of Uluru. I mean, I'm not too triggered by that, but yeah. The, 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 they didn't call it Uluru. Can you make... Come on, mate. It's, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're American, even though they're, you know, whatever. <laughs> Sega... Total Warrior. I have totally no idea. Actually, this is probably going to be an RTS game, actually. There aren't too many RTS games on console, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this game on PC. So I could be wrong, but let's see. Ugh. The Storm Breaks area Arena Challenge? Total Warrior Trader. I mean, yeah, exactly. I don't think they knew any better. Um, Sucker Punch is an American studio, so. That's why I can't think of it as, like, the worst mistake. I think I've seen, uh, I think I've seen, you know, weirder interpretations before. 
I'll let Ayers Rock slide, <laughs> even though it's not the uh, indigenous term. <laughs> Yeah, I think you were... Uh... Oh, I'm a spawn. I'm running around. Wow, this demo disc... The last few demo discs have had a fair few, um, like, hack and slash games. I wonder if that was the trend back then. Did we just end up with a lot of, uh, hack and slash beat-em-ups or something? You know? Are these my friend units or something? There must be a way you can control them. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. New objective. Yeah, okay. So I think I, I it, it's just occurred to me that, you know, obviously through different er, different uh, every few years, I think gaming goes through a different phase, whether it be battle royales, FPSs, zombies. We must have been going through a phase around 2005 where there was a lot of uh, kind of hack and slash type games. I'm noticing that I usually think of Dynasty Warriors or, um, you know, Orochi or something like that. But it seems that there was a lot of these sorts of games too that are similar, but they're not, they're, not, they're like a fresh IP. You have failed me, Spartan. I killed seven. Alright. Interesting. Coming fall 2005. That's, that's all the demo let me do. I might just quickly have a glance at Spy Toy, but we're probably not actually going to play anything on it. We'll just let it boot up and see what it looks like. Because I'm pretty sure Spy Toy, like, I only ever tried, like, a prototype build of it on iToy 2, and it was just, it was just, you know, the idea of setting up a, you could basically use your PS2 as a CCTV camera. So I'm assuming that's what Spy Toy ended up becoming, but I don't think anybody used it, to be honest. Yeah, USB camera not detected. Yeah, so I would have to plug in a camera and test it out and stuff like that. So... That demo disc is finished, and we have one more to go through. I'm actually just, uh... Just amazed what we got through with all these. So, we've gotten through 15 demo discs. So now for the final one. Demo disc number 16, which is actually from issue 49, January 2006. This is the latest demo I have. Um, most of them are spanned from around 2002, and then I had a few from 2003, I added a heap of them from 2005, I've got this last demo just from 2006. Um, let's load that one up. And the games available on this one here are SingStar 80s, The Incredibles 2, Jack X Combat Racing, The Matrix Path of Neo, um, Ricky Ponting 2005, Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, and James Bond from Russia with Love. So once again we'll st skip SingStar because you need peripherals and the licensed music. Um, I probably won't bother too much with Ricky Ponting, but hey, if you want to play some cricket, there's, this is definitely the demo just to look for, or just buy Ricky Ponting cricket, because I'm sure you won't have a problem finding it. Um, Alright. Oh, right off the bat, the first demo is a Jack X Combat Racing. I have also played this game on stream um, a fair bit. 
Unfortunately, I lost my save data and I didn't beat it, but I have I have beaten it many times uh, growing up, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what they include in this demo. I'm pretty sure it's a really late build, so much like some of these other demos, it's going to be pretty consistent to the final product, but they would have just, um, you know, cut stuff for the sake of it being a demo and not letting you access everything. Now I'll skip this main cutscene because it's the only- so... That animation is different. Um, but yeah, Jackx had a- it had a soundtrack from Queens of the Stone Age, but at the same time only- uh, I'm pretty sure only the first track is actually, like, licensed that you can't play. The rest of it's all instrumental and stuff, it's fine. Um, it's so nice to be able to see this menu working because uh, when I was playing it I had to play it through an emulator which couldn't load the videos, so a lot of textures were missing. But that was just a problem on my end. So yeah, we're gonna do single Another player. Risky, the, bush. the jungle here can get tight, so watch your lines. Don't forget to use a weapon when you have it. If you hesitate, you'll miss chances. Use it or lose it, I say. Show me how it's done. <laughs> All right, so they give you four this, different tracks this is an to play, race, Jack. You'll which need is to cool. As many artifacts as you can. This race is about killing more than driving. My kind of competition. Take out as many drivers <laughs> as you can for the top spot. Show no mercy, and the crowd will love it. This cliff's terrain is full of surprises. There are lots of nooks and crannies to find here, and faster ways to move through the area. Be careful near the drop-off side of the cliff. Pick a wrong place to jump, and your racing days will be over. Remember, open terrain means lots of opportunities to acquire and take out targets. So stay on top of your weapons at all times. Good luck. Kira makes a valid point. It's so e uh, The amount of times I've fallen off of this map is not funny. Um, also noting that from Jack 3 onwards, she's voiced by Tara Strong. If you're wondering who the voice is, um, that's her. Uh, trying to think what type of race we'll do. Honestly, we'll start off with this Clifftop Battlefield Deathmatch. Um, I love this sport. Last year alone, racing brought in more cash than Crash City's entire yearly budget. Now that's big. Believe it or not, it can get even bigger. I mean, with the right imagination. I'd like to see laws passed forcing the sport to be shown on multiple channels. Maybe broadcasted in school for the kiddies. Seems like everyone's got a stake in this thing. Well, we certainly do. There's a ton of money swirling around this sport. And where there's money, there's Oh, quantity. Dex, you're making me hungry. <laughs> but against who? I don't know. I won't say anything about the story. Ooh, I like that they're using this asset. Um, it's really cool. Tara Strong really is in everything. Exactly. Um, yeah. She's been she's been in part of the Jack and Daxter roster since Jack Three. Um, I forget who voices Kira beforehand. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of notable notable characters uh, in the Jack and Daxter universe that are voiced by people who have voiced in Avatar and some other shows. Um, but Tara is the one that comes to mind right now. All right, I know how to play this game. Oh, you can still modify the loading screen. That's a normal thing in the in the final game. Alright. I mean, some of the assets look a little bit sharper, but honestly, this all looks the same. Oh, we're missing some sound effects. Yep. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, Edgy. Edgy, the scapegoat character. It, it is a little weird having some of the sound effects missing, but um, this looks like the complete game. Oh. Oh, they don't have a timer, so I think it's going to be first to ten kills. I'm actually surprised that they didn't put a timer on this, considering uh, um, with the custom game mode you can set a timer for these, these matches. It's, it was such a naughty dog thing to do at the time you know, with um with their IPs, you know, 
the final Crash Bandicoot game they ever made was a racing game. The final Jack and Dexter game they ever made was a racing game. Uh, Lost Frontier doesn't count because they didn't make that. They handed it off to another team to do it, and it's not that good. Um, if they took Jack and Dexter out of the picture, I think the game was fine, but I just think that, yeah, a lot of fans will tell you that it just doesn't, um, doesn't suit the franchise. Anyway, uh, tangent aside, oh, oh, some of the, um, some of the weapons when it shows the kill screen are actually different symbols. I think they changed the assets. Because she threw a grenade at me and the symbol was different. Again, they're really subtle things that I don't think people would notice, but I have played this game enough, so I thought I'd make an observation. Alright. Yep. I'm stuck. We can get out, though. I did mention that... I think I mentioned uh, in part one of this stream that um, in most racing games there is, you know, there is a car reset button, which is usually on select, but... This is probably the second game I've encountered over the last two days that doesn't have a car reset button. But this game is also programmed well enough that it will reset you. Uh, if you can't put your car over, it'll auto-reset you. Okay, you this was a late PS2 title, so it was made very... it was made very well, I think. Because this is a... yeah, this is a demo just from 2002... 2006, sorry, so... This game would have come out um, probably the following month or two after the demo disc, I think. So it had a, it had a lot of development time. They were, they were able to do a lot more with the hardware this late down the line. No! Sadly, the PS4 version of this game it did not get as much get didn't get as much treatment, but. Um, how much content this demo has. You know, if I didn't have this game, I think I still could sink plenty of time playing these four uh, game modes that they included. Man, it's a free -for -all. This just seems like one of those demos that's built that way, that they'll let you enjoy it for hours. I can't imagine this having a timer. Yeah, there we go. It's first to ten. Yeah, they didn't even add, they didn't even add a timer for the deathmatch mode. Which the game allows you to do so normally. So they just went first to 10, which is nice. Coming fall 2005. Wait, that makes no sense. It's a 2006 demo disc. Oh, I must have already been out then. Yeah. It must have come out that Christmas, I think. Oh, that, that X. Okay. Alright. Might quickly try out the circuit race. Just to show you guys the, the absolute... Crazy carnage. Next time you and your thugs want to fight, maybe you should pick on someone your own size. My, my. I I when get you, to they meet Razor. Right Lisa, Jack. And? And what? What about me? Oh, yes. You're the loudmouth storyteller from the bar. But Jack. <laughs> yeah. I love that he implies like a roll credit segment and out. then. Razor doesn't give it to him. Razor doesn't give it to him. He's just like, no. Nah. And the light turns green. Oh, that three, two, one, go is a different sound effect. Um, the first, second, third, fourth place is orange. <laughs> In the final game, it's yellow here. <laughs> I don't know why they changed that. I'm just no! pointing out what I can observe. I'm just pointing it out, chat. To anyone who's interested in uh, learning oh, God, what they Jack. change. I think it might have been more of a, a legibility kind of thing. I think it's more like it looks better on your eyes kind of thing. They fall if they choose a darker color. I'm just trying to think of reasons that they would change the color. Because it would be, I think it would be easier on the eyes.
and deflected. Ah, oh, and he got me anyway, because it's two sets of rockets. Blade for you. Great car, but you can you can spin it out if you want. Boom, baby. I mean, they give it to you as the starter car because it has great speed, but um, its handling is also way too good. So I personally think it's a more advanced vehicle. Even though they give you other vehicles down the line that are even slidier. I just quite admire the physics of this game. So if I if I didn't if I didn't get the pleasure of renting this game back in the day, I probably would have played this demo to death if I had it. Thankfully, I had the option to rent it, and I rented it enough times that eventually um, I I was able to purchase the game. So sometimes sometimes everybody's experience with the game is different, and I think it's just really cool that we can hold on to those memories. And your experience may have been from either playing a demo, playing it at a friend's house, or renting it in my case. Oh ho, yeet! Go down here this time. Yeah, that grenade symbol, they, they did change it to the final because this one's not very legible when it's behind the uh, behind the yellow and stuff. So I think I think it literally was for that reason, just to make it easy to look at. I'm also wondering if the AI is like, you know, if their health is slightly tougher in the final game. Because I was able to I was able to I was able to knock out one of the AI hey, just with two grenades instead of three. So I think I think their I think their health was modified too. Alright, silver. Literally by uh 40, 40 milliseconds. <laughs> Pretty great. Adventure mode with 45 minutes of cinematics. Yeah, there are there are pretty solid cutscenes in this. Oh, uh, and connectivity with Dexter on the PSP. They actually note that. Oh, this track is not in the final game. I don't know if I can play any further than that, but yeah. That's pretty cool. That's, um, yeah. Track is not in the final game. I don't, I don't recognize it one bit. Alright, uh, I guess the next game is to play From Russia With Love, which is a 007 James Bond game. Interesting that they made a PS2 game about about one of the Sean Connery books. 
you know? It wasn't like, oh, let's make a Pierce Brosnan one or something. They actually made it about one of the Sean Connery films. I mean, this looks like a fascinating game, but yeah. At the same time, it's like, I don't know if the current generation really uh, knew much about Sean Connery. So it's just an interesting, it's just an interesting decision, you know? Tori plus crouch, fire, wall cover, focus, action. This is kind of reminding me of the weapon cover system that they use in Uncharted. This works pretty well, I think. Oh. Okay, he can't jump, he just vaults over things. <clears throat> Interesting. Miss his daughter. Oh, okay. Okay. I got like a Tommy gun or something? That's exactly what I was thinking, Phoenix. This actually feels like a, you know, this looks like a decent movie game. Um, during Halloween, I actually played a few, of, few of those. I played um, Peter Jackson's King Kong, and I also played through uh, the Van Helsing game. And I thought both were really good movie games that just get overlooked a lot. King Kong was actually a really good first-person shooter slash survival game, and Van Helsing was like this. It was like a third-person kind of attack game, action game, I guess, to use a generic term, um, but it followed its source material really well, and you know, it was something to play for Halloween. I'm assuming that it being a James Bond game is probably going to have some stealth sections too, surely. But this is just, you know, what the demo is going to offer, because it's action-packed, it's what people want to see generally, when it comes to early E3 stuff. Oh. <laughs> Again, I think it's really interesting that they made a game but about Sean Connery's James Bond, not about like a more modern James Bond at the time. Because, you know, they've made a fair few games with Pierce Brosnan, but then they could have made one with, uh... I don't know, they didn't go with Daniel Craig, they... Just decided, oh yeah, we like the uh, we like the Sean Connery movie. Just interesting. This probably seems like a game that would have been for an older game, for sure. Someone who was really into the James Bond uh, franchise. Oh, there is combat. There's some interesting combat, and I accidentally cancel it. Oh yes, we get a we get a roll. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how I triggered it. Alright, I used up the Tommy gun, so we're gonna stick- go back to this handgun. And yeah, I think it's shooting works really well. This is very user-friendly. You don't have to be, like, good at shooters to use this. I really shouldn't feel like... Oh, well, locked on target. Okay. The music does feel very John Williams, and I hope John Williams won't DMCA me. I pray, because he's done that to me before. 
please don't do this. I'm, you know, it's for the love of archiving. I don't mean, I don't mean bad. I mean well. Oh, SMG rounds. Okay. Well, it's not a Wilhelm scream, but it'll do. How am I supposed to jump over this? Because you can't jump. Um, you have the X is just an interaction button, so you can only like vault over certain things when it, the game tells you. At least I'm not. At least I'm fireproof. <laughs> I don't actually know what to do because both sides are destroyed like this. Do I just drop down? I can't drop down. I'm picking up ammunition, which is nice, I guess. Is there a, there's probably a door that I have to go through, right? I I came from up here. Alright. So there might be another... Awards. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this looks pretty interesting. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm stuck now. <laughs> I might just actually end it there because I'm a bit worried about the soundtrack uh, getting ruined in case it's, uh. There we go. With some demos, you can hold start and select and it'll reset you back to the menu. I thought I should point that out to anybody who. Mess who plays with demo discs, if you ever want to do so. But it doesn't work with every demo. Alright, we'll skip Singstar. We got The Incredibles, Rise of the Underminer. We got The Matrix. I feel like a ma Matrix is probably going to have licensed music. Uh, we got Battlefield and Ricky Ponting. Uh, so next is The Rise of the Underminer. Which I don't know why Incredibles 2 didn't just follow the Underminer storyline. Instead, they kind of just shoehorned the poor villain to to get defeated in like the first ten minutes, which is just a downer. Because like my during my childhood, I was pretty I was just like excited to kind of see the Underminer, um, you know, become a villain in the next movie. And instead, they literally undermine his character for for lack of a for lack of explaining it without a pun. The pun just fits so well. I remember this game being like pretty mediocre from reviews, but um, the first game is apparently better, and the first game is the one I have played. I remember enjoying the first game, actually. I hope I'm not gonna get in trouble with the music. Loading, undermine a threat. So this was Incredibles 2, before Incredibles 2 was Incredibles 2. I'm guessing this would have been like an early level in the, in the game. Whoa, this menu. Mission select. Oh, why is it? Why is it none of these games allow me to change the uh, the audio? There we go. Music volume. This game does. Most of these demos I have played today have not allowed me... Yeah, most of, most of these most of these games have not let me turn off the music. Which is not very streamer friendly, so... Just to, just to prevent any, uh, any, any problems. 
from memory, I think I think um I think in reviews they mentioned that you end up fighting a lot of robots. So it kind of was a bit random, but hey. For like at least from first experience, I think that this looks like a pretty good demo. Bob's su surprisingly athletic. <laughs> This must, this must have been before his gut. Or after, when he got back in shape. What's that? Earthquake! The underminer's machine! I think he's up to something down and dirty. Not if we stop him first. This way! Alright, I can switch to Frozen! Destroy the spike towers. Okay. What do we have here? Watch out! He's got some kind of missile. Well, show him the muscle. I can't get close enough for that tower. Frozo, do something about that tower. I might be able to freeze up the engine. I think I could freeze the tower. Ugh. Okay. Some obstacles can be smashed. There are more towers smash, smash, smash. I could show you some cover. There's cover behind that debris. Ooh, looks like somebody's been busy. We need to get to those towers. Watch those missiles. Heads up. Watch those wrist rockets. Bunch, bunch. Yeah, baby. Touchdown. That was better than cool. That was ice tastic. Boom. Just like that. Ice tastic. That's the best pun you could come up with. Really, Frozone got knocked out. Whoa. All right. Did you feel that? Stay frosty now. Something's wrong here, Froze. Oh. Enslaved or destroyed? Destroyed. Destruction in progress. They're getting bigger. Why does the robot sound like it has a British accent? Destroy in progress. I just don't expect a robot to speak so formally, you know. This guy's spoiling my dinner plan. Come on, let's head through that gap. Oh my god. Yeah, whatever, we can skip him. <laughs> I could just skip some of these enemies. Oops. He can double jump except when uh when they show up. Alright, maybe I can freeze him. Oh my god, buzz off robot. <laughs> I tried freezing them, did that not work? Wow. It lets you freeze it, but it does hey, literally nothing. I see light through there. You could just break through that wall or bust that wall down. Whoa, watch out. Look out. We need to get to Oh, okay. I made it through the checkpoint. Or did I just this die? I don't know. For. OK, 
Oh, come on, that works in other games. Alright. Hey, I can see light through there. You could just break through that wall. <laughs> now I'm warmed up. Sounds like something big is going on up there. Oh, I've already forgotten how to switch character. Come on, Bob. Punch it for me. Punch this out of the way? Really? I can't? I'll select to upgrade. Okay. No tanks. I mean, I mean, this demo, this demo is interesting, but it's probably like. It's probably like the extent of um probably the fun in the game. Because I've I've heard like I've heard that the game gets pretty repetitive, so I guess as a short demo it's it's entertaining, but I'm not sure if I'd actually <laughs> play through the whole game, to be honest. Then hey, the demo ended right there, so Alright, we played those. Um yeah, music. So we're gonna try a Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. Now, I know that Battlefield is a first person shooter, but um let's just have a look. So I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that it, it it does different things to what Call of Duty does. Or at least it used to. <laughs> I don't know about nowadays, but Before EA was nothing but DLC. Alright. Welcome back to Southeast Kazakhstan, gents. We're back in this area of operations for one. Kazakhstan. He said Kazakhstan. It's just, just stood out to me. We're about to remedy that. The veterans know we've done fairly well in maritime operations. That's caused the Chinese to switch gears. We're now after vital lines of communication. 
Chinese assault teams have taken okay. our helicopter support base and the forward army and refueling point adjacent to the north road. Conduct an assault with fast attack vehicles, kick them out of there, and secure the airstrip for follow-on operations. We need that support base. Now get it done. All right. Yeah, I gotta admit it's I gotta admit it's visually impressive. Um I've played Call of Duty uh World at War Final Fronts on the PS2 and whilst that game looked pretty good, it definitely looked muddier than this. I think this does look clearer. It's a cleaner looking game. Target down. We are rolling. Okay, we jump with Whoops. So what's my snipe button? Oh wait, is it gonna be click? Yeah, it's gonna be click. Hmm, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but at least I can I can say that, you know, visually it's very clean. I mean, I guess it's red, so that must be bad guys, right? I can't, I can't, uh... Did I mention that I don't play many first-person shooters? <laughs> so my aiming is not the best. There's somebody there that I can fire at. Oh, can I hide in here? Can he see me? Nice round. Get up there and check it out. All right, got him. At least I shot some bad guy. Help if I can aim. Ow. They're everywhere. Open up. Here they are. Yeah, there's a lot more like this you know there's this thing like weather effects and stuff going on that i don't think were present in call of duty games at the time so oh my god oh my god three perfect kills in a row okay and that's dead wait what Oh, did it just move me to another unit? Oh, okay. So I guess because I died, it just took me to another unit to, to shoot as. Mm. 
Okay, I'm doing grenades and stuff. three enemy troops in one click. Oh, look at me getting achievements. <laughs> Ow. Oh, these weather effects are really impressive, but they really limit your visibility, which I guess is the aim. They don't want to make this too easy. I mean, apparently I'm doing decent. According to the uh, the HUD telling me that Oh, that's full damage, K9. Oh <laughs> that's dead. Yep. <laughs> oh that's that's yeah. I can understand the appeal for their uh battlefield, being able to kind of you know War is declared October 2005. Alright, well, this demo disc is uh, January 2006, so I guess, you know, they were just, you know, during January, they were just putting a lot of the demos from Christmas time onto here so people could get a taster. Plus, the dates in the advertising must have been uh, in America, so not necessarily PAL regions. Um, yeah. Alright. Alright, chat. So, uh... I think that was pretty darn great. That was, uh, the final demo disc here. I think that was pretty awesome. Um... Yeah, I'm very thankful to have all of you here today to have gone through all 16 demo discs with me. So thank you for tuning in for both parts. If you haven't watched part one, um, it'll be linked somewhere on the top here if you're watching on YouTube. Alternatively, it'll be here on Twitch as well. Um, yeah, I'm very thankful to have you all here. Um, it's been it's been really great. Uh, one thing I might just I just might go through a couple of things before we wrap up. Um, just just to do a little bit of discussion and reflection from what we've just gone through the last two days um, with both part one and part two. So, you know, how do you guys feel with this? You know, did you find it fun and nostalgic? I personally did find a few of these demos nostalgic because some of the games like Ratchet and Jack and Sly, um, I have a, a very close attachment to them. And then, at the same time, playing some of these other games like Brave, and Battlefield, and um, there was also Genji and Fahrenheit. Um, just having a look at all these different games that I had no experience with was also very, very cool for me personally. Um, so I think I had some fun and some nostalgia channeled from both of these experiences today. and both both parts yeah um yeah if you're if you're watching if you're in if you're in chat or if you're in the youtube comments what was your favorite demo that you saw today or a favorite demo that you saw uh, as a kid growing up um what was the most interesting to you whether you've played the demo before or not it's been been really been really great i've, I've enjoyed this so much so if you're watching this on youtube thank you so much for watching um I've already mentioned it before. Feel free to feel free to leave your comments below um, if you haven't already. I hope you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the content as there will be some other great stuff coming to the channel and also go and follow me on Twitch as well where I stream all sorts of retro games, arcade stuff and I stream art as well as other fun things. So feel free to tune in. Thank you so much.